yes. Hey, how y'all doing? It is uh, Wednesday. Today is a Wednesday, and we are here to do the show. We got a good one for you. We got a goodie. We got a goodie. We got a good show. Uh, I'll tell you all about it. Al Prophet, me and him chopped it up. All fair, and we taped it. Taped it. Did it, it, it for you? And now we're gonna play it. I could only catch him during the uh, was it called the the break? So me and him just had a nice discussion about things. We kind of talked about everything. Uh, why was gonna have him back? Why was What's he? That? Why was he in town? He was in LA for a bit. I don't know. What the, I don't know. I didn't even ask. Oh. Um, I think he might even be out there. I'm not sure. I don't know what his deal is. Uh, so, Al Prophet covers a lot of hood shit. Did a lot of bunch of videos. Detroit cat. Detroit cat. I think Detroiters know. He's a little bit everywhere. So he and I had a discussion. Uh. And he will be back, and we'll be taking calls and shit with him. So you got that. You got that. <laughs> All right, last week, uh, John, there was a news story, John. It was like uh, words that need to be canceled, and I'm like, ugh, fucking. I think we need to, ca- I don't, I want to, I want to cancel, cancel. I'd like to cancel canceling as a word to cancel, but. I want to, uh, let's just say played out terms or terms are just like, ugh, ugh, I don't want to hear that shit. So we, I asked you, the listener, I think it's important to crowd, crowdsource things. You dig? We got all these listeners all over the fucking country and, uh. We're not using their brains. What the fuck? What the fuck is this for? What the fuck is this for? It's a good resource. Fuck yeah. Uh, yeah. I should dislike pause, but that still makes me laugh sometimes. I can't help There's it. There's certain words that like. I just can't help it. Like YOLO. I made fun of that word so much that now I just say the word to make fun of the word but I'm no longer making fun of the word you know what I mean it's become I guess it's meta to a certain extent which is a word that people use it's played out it's like the joke is a joke is a joke is a joke and that's why it's a joke like that type of shit it's unfunny therefore it is funny therefore it's like meta very ironic yeah which Work sometimes, other times it's lazy. But yeah, I get you. Pause, pause the same one. I've I've watched the young cats yelling "a yo" wrong. Like that's the other thing too. These cats will grab a hold of some slang, and not even like don't. They just like I told you how much fuckboy just irritates me because they don't they're not using it properly. It's the exact opposite. Or like uh, these dudes were. They were watching something, and it wasn't even like nothing gay or sexual. Because back in the day, it was either uh, no homo, pause, or hey yo. I don't even say it right because I don't say it. But like I had, I was watching some kids on television yelling "a yo" at shit that wasn't gay. Maybe it started that way, but it just turned into a something that had something to do with man. I love the man. I love the taste of meat. And then there would be your pause. I say pause a lot. As an ironic joke. Do you ever say pause to people? Do I say pause? No. Yeah. But, but, I, but I still laugh. If I I still laugh when, when people say pause. If they're just like casually, the way that, the ones that use it properly, they're just like, oh yeah, I'm going through the back door, pause, and they just keep going. I'm like, wow. It just. It, no, yeah, you gotta, you have to, yes, uh, ironically using it. You're like, yeah. <laughs> Cause you're pointing out how fucking goofy that shit is. That's I think isn't that meta by using that word to make fun of the word. Yes. Boom. It's wheels within wheels. Wheels and with wheels and with wheels. I wish I came up with a better word for meta. 
Because I had to look that shit up. I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? I had to go to the glossary. All right, so we're, uh, they came up, some school kids who know nothing, came up with some words that was played out or phrases. What are words and phrases that were played out? What is the list that they came up with? John wasn't ready. Oh, sorry, I was on the phone. He just wasn't ready. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, what did you say? We had a whole list of words that we heard. Oh, what was yeah, the list it. of words that it. the played out phrases and words that you do not want to hear? But again, this was created by uh, school Some college kids. Yeah. Well, yeah, the judges of a uh, uh, Michigan University's annual list. This is over near you. You should be a little more respectful. U of M? Michigan. Fuck U of M. Bunch see, of fucking morons. I didn't see U of M. It's a Michigan University. A Lake Superior. What is a Michigan University? Lake Superior. State oh University. man, that's way to fuck up. Yeah, that's way to fuck up north. That's like fifteen hours away from me, bro. Yeah, well, they're Michigan. Beautiful up there. They Beautiful. Be- they don't claim us. All right, man. Yeah, like we got the peninsulas. Do you know what a peninsula is? Yes, I know what a peninsula is. What is a peninsula? Uh, it's a little spit of land that's surrounded by on three sides by water. Correct, something like that. You are correct, sir. Thanks. Um. So yeah, we got the two peninsulas and the. The Upper Peninsula does not fuck with the Lower Peninsula. We two different states, bro. Oh. They're closer to being Wisconsin. Oh, really? Yeah. And there's a bridge that separates it. This is how corny and sad they are up there. I like them, but like... Do you know what they call people in the Lower Peninsula? I don't. Trolls. Damn. I'm like, why? Because you live under the bridge. I'm like, oh, man. You want to pat them on the head, be like, "Good job, man. That's, that's, that's good. That's, that's good right. Stuff. We're trolls. Yeah. Oh, you're a bunch of trolls, eh? That's how they talk. Oh, where are they from? That, that was when that was a city I almost got fucked up in up, up there in some small smallest town. What you doing here? Kind of late for you to be out, huh? Eh? I'm like, oh no. All right, so these guys, their kid, the the kids of these kids, which are probably fucking annoying came up with this list what was the list all right so here are the 10 words and terms that have been banished for 2023 Mm. number 10 it is what it is it is what it is (sighs) yeah i'd I'd, I'd be guilty that one i know but i like here's the deal man a lot of these words and shit i just been saying since forever they grab them bitches on run them into the dirt and then tell me the word that they got from me is played out not from me per se but like the word that everybody else has been using that you just discovered has been played out and it's like uh because <laughs> you see like eh. now nah, i'm gonna keep using it all right what else all right number nine is ridiculous but it's absolutely you can't use that anymore i say awesome a lot i'm like awesome because i like the way it sounds number eight irregardless I should hate that word, but I like it because irregardless is like improper or something. Yeah, but now it it, so many people were using it. They had to finally just bow down to the the masses. They find it's a word. I mean, that's kind of how it goes. I I don't mind bottom up people dictating words. You know what you dig? Like if the whole everybody decides that irregardless is a word, like to me, I'm to the point where conversate is a word. Ah, I think you should rethink that. Why? It's the same. It's the same principle. <laughs> it is, but <laughs> it's the same principle. And I think there's more legit. It is more. Le- there's more legitimacy to saying "conversate" is a word than for me to for for me to come down and say that birthing person is a word. Uh, you dig what I'm saying? Sure. Birthing person, like some fucking think tank of 10 people came up with that and just fed it to everybody. All of the fucking smarties up here in college. Conversate, that, that's bottom up shit. I didn't even know conversate wasn't a word. Well, because it makes, it sounds real good. And like my, like, like I said before, like my, I thought gription was a word forever. I like sometimes, and it wasn't popular, it was just something I said. I didn't, I didn't, no one's saying gription outside of me, but like sometimes the word just sounds right. Conversate. Well, well, 
again, uh, they have bowed down to the masses. Irregardless. The conversate is now. It's been accepted, unfortunately. Has it? Yes. So, hey, man, you might not like it. It's a it non, might, non-standard. It might smack. Yo, I get it. It might smack of being fucking sounding stupid and ignorant. Hey, look, conversate's a word, y'all, but just know words have fucking uh, associations with them. And if you say conversate, to a educated person, they're gonna they're, that's gonna be a little ding. I don't know which way it's gonna ding, but it's gonna go beep. It'll be a blip. Just know that it's gonna say something about you. I don't know how they're gonna take it, but it will say something about you. And irregardless, I don't even know, like, because what, irresponsible, so not responsible. Yeah, regardless means not regarding something. But So now you're saying not not regarding something. So it would mean regarding something. What else? Okay. Whoa, that was fucking, that hurt my brain just saying all that shit. Yeah, we're spinning around there. And then, Sounds good, though, man. It just does. Also on the list. Irregardless, could that have been it? What's that? Uh, also on the list. Amazing. People are overusing that, supposedly. Amazing. Amazing. There's a, uh, there's a, like a black conservative dude that says that shit. He runs around and trolls people. And you respect him? <laughs> and, and you respect him? No. It's just fucking, it sounds funny when he says it, dog. <laughs> I'm not allowed to. <laughs> I'm just telling you. Might that might be where that shit came from? That's all I'm saying. Now, also one of your favorites, moving forward. I'm not gonna beat that dead horse, but yes, moving nice. forward annoys the shit out of me when people that don't do what they need to do say that. Also, mm, gaslighting, and, and I don't respect. I don't respect the moving forward people. If you're asking about respect, clap back. Clap back. I'm tired of that word. All right, what else? Gaslighting. Gaslighting. Yeah. It is getting... So what is it like? Just... Man, it's just become what? Uh, what What was the word before gaslighting? That's been used so much. I don't even know the word before gaslighting. Br- uh, brainwashing or denial. Yeah. I mean, I guess... Sort of gaslighting is being misused uh, because I mean it really is sort of psychological torture, and I think people don't really understand that. So just no, it's like you get caught doing some shit, and you'd be like, "What are you talking about? It's all your problem." Hmm. No, what do you mean? Like, yeah, you just straight up lie to their face and make them question themselves. Gaslighting. All right, what else? All right, and then also quiet quitting. Sure, that's lame. I'll give no, you that. I'm tired. Yeah, it's. I didn't... Is that it? Is that the list? A uh, couple more. Inflection point. Who uses that? Nobody. I don't even. I've never even heard that used. It's sort of like a when you're like a pseudo intellectual. You're trying to sound smart. Well, this is an inflection point. Shut up. Uh, Man, I gotta hang out with more pseudo intellectuals. I never even heard that fucking. I've never even heard that shit. I think you're you're in good shape if you're not. And then finally, I can I can certainly get on board with this goat. Lame. I know, man. I know, dog. I know. I hate that word. I, I'm gonna be real with you. I never like goat. Do you ever hear me say goat? Thankfully, no. I you know why? You and I, I think it's a stupid fucking word. You and I would have to have a talk. It's just stupid. Point. I don't like it. I've accepted it. It's around me. People use it. I'll be like, hey, did you look at the throat goat porn or some shit like that? But other than that, I'm just, I don't like it. Because when I think of a goat, I think of a scapegoat. It usually has a weird negative connotation to it. So, sorry, that's been embedded in my head. And, like, as far as an animal, I'm not like, you know what I want to be? A goat. Just eats a bunch of shit and then gets slaughtered. I'd be a ram because I just ram my dick. Ram, ram, ram. All right. So what are the played out words for you? My words are the played out. I fucking hate toxic. I just can't. It's just used everywhere now. Everywhere. 
the other shit I hate is I was just talking about this the other day or last a uh, couple shit a couple days ago and that's uh, triggered yes terrible but here's the deal man well, go ahead why, why, don't, why do you hate triggered uh, again it just it's, it's, it's used by people who are I would have to Not. say overly sensitive yes that was my whole deal there was something that like there was something I couldn't participate like I was literally triggered by something in a very real way Okay. And I couldn't even say it because all these pussy motherfuckers said triggered. Like I had a crazy injury because of some shit and tasting like a taste was associated with it. So as soon as I tasted it, like kind of shook me to that, shook me to a point where like, oh, fuck. Reminded me of like, like a crazy flashback. But all these pussies have took triggered and now Vietnam vets can't say trigger triggered no more. <laughs> Like somebody, somebody was out here fucking got their leg blown off, was collecting ears and shit like that, and uh, he is really fucked up by things. Some fuck ass person gets you know is triggered by uh, uh you know someone saying uh everyday word, getting triggered by saying her instead of they. Like it's just that triggers you. Like this, you guys are the same. Well, the one guy, that half his homies died. He's got a fucking peg leg. All he sees is horror. Yeah. Fireworks might trigger him. Like, do not put yourself in the same conversation because you decided to remix yourself, dog. Stop. Well, the one that really pisses me off is when it's used in sort of a passive-aggressive way. If I become clearly irritated by some shithead, they say, oh, you're triggered. No, I think you're just a shithead. Fuck you. That's the other thing, too. It's just the whole deal. Like, yeah, a lot of times that shit... Or like, uh... <laughs> Like, oh, you're fragile. I'm like, I'm fragile? I'm not the one that needs to eliminate words or else my pussy fucking dries up and goes inside of me. You're the one that can't hear words. I can hear all words, dog. Who's fragile? So a lot of times the people telling you the shit is the exact person that they are themselves. It's called projection. All right, so what are the words that... And those were a lot of... uh Honestly, I'm tired of hearing like new kids say bet. They don't even know what the fuck bet means, man. And I'm just like, stop. You're about to, like, it's just such a, to take just such a common word that's, like, okay, and then turn it into something super fucking trendy, which, it just annoys me. I've got bones in the Bronx. Bones! Yo. Go ahead, bro. I hate all new slang words. They make no sense. They have no movement to you. They don't make you feel anything. Because slang, when we used to use it, a dude could use it in any way, but the energy that he put behind it was what you was what you loved about the word because he was excited when he said, yo, it was crazy bitches at the jump off last night. Okay. Mm -hmm. yes. You wanted to be there. Yes. <laughs> you know yes. Because of the energy that he put behind it. But when I hear people say, especially dudes, when I hear guys say, I'm dead, that burns me. That pisses me gay. off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it does. Sounds yeah, it weird, does. man. I am yeah. literally dead right now. You're like, ooh, you just said that sentence, See, now man? Now you fucked up the convo, and I don't even want to talk to you right now. Now <laughs> I just want to end this conversation as quickly as I can because you're wilding. And he is dead. He's dead to you now. It's like, yes, you're dead. You're dead to me. Go the fuck and, away. And, and, and what you notice is women and men are starting to talk the same and use the same same words. We didn't we didn't talk like women and women didn't talk like this. We use totally different phrases as men than women did. Now you're having women saying the same thing and men saying the same thing that females are saying. You no, we both can't use the same slang words. Bro, and that's the whole thing about slang. It's like slang is letting people know you're part of a certain group. You know what I mean? That's what language and clothing, we're signaling like, yeah, this is what I'm about. This is this is who I fuck with. And as men, we are different than women. So it's like, yeah, this is, this is what men say. <laughs> Even like girls call each other bitches all the fucking time. I don't call girls bitches unless I, to their face, you know, unless I really hate that bitch. It's not in the yeah, different it's, it's the, what's, the other one I hate is 
when I hear a guy say some shit like my pussy was wet. What? what? Wait, 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 wait. I'm not. Wait, hold on a second. Wait, hold up a second. Who's? How's that? Can you yeah, just? You ain't see, remember that? They, remember they had it in the Chris Brown video. I forget what song it was. He was with his homeboys in the video, and his boy said his pussy was wet or something about his pussy. And what? I didn't. Straight up, I, dog. Have you ever heard it out? Have you ever heard people say it? Yeah. Or was it? Yeah, I, I've heard it. Not with, in my group. I've been sitting somewhere and overheard All it. Right. Can <laughs> you like? I'm dumb, Bones. I'm dumb. Can you pretend like you're that person and I'm like you and I'm sitting at a table? What would I have heard them say? How is that used? He said, "My pussy hurt." And that's what I'm saying. With, with, with the statement, it didn't even make any sense. Was his feelings hurt? Does that was that what that meant, or is his pussy wet? Does he that was, mean like was, your nose is he, open, or is that like a like he was, you? He was, well, in the in the in, dude was inviting him to go somewhere, and he said nah. So he was using it as in like he was insulted, but he was saying his pussy hurts as opposed to saying he's insulted. Ugh. All right, the, you know what I'm saying. The, the lines are off the hook, sir. Uh, you just, it, you just. Here's the deal. With the shit, it, this is what it sounds like to me. It sounds like over the last thirty, forty years, as I've been saying, it's like the men and women we don't know how to behave anymore, and now men are behaving more feminine, and women are behaving more masculine. Neither one of us are good at this, and now you guys got dudes saying their pussy is wet. And he's dead. Is that is that My a dick. fair assessment? What dude turns around and lets a female tell him to suck her dick? Huh? <laughs> you know, the yeah, slang man. has gotten right, Bones. way out of Bones. control. John's John's like, shut up, you got to move on. Sorry, Bones. Um, thank you, Bones. The, you you and I could have a whole friend. conversation on these terms. I just never heard those, man. I'm sorry. All right, thank you, Bones. Or I'm, I never heard my pussy as well. I agree with him on that dead shit. It's weird uh, for dudes. I've got Sheree. I'm literally dead. Sh All right, yo. Sheree in Pittsburgh. Sheree. <laughs> Hey, what's going on, y'all? I'm laughing my at that pussy, dude. My pussy my pussy hurts off of that last <laughs> conversation. My pussy battered. Hey, I'm over here dying like what? I never even heard of that. I never even heard of a female say that shit. But my yeah. word is lit. Yeah. Like I don't like lit because lit from when I was back growing up, lit means like I'm gonna light your ass the fuck up. Like, period. Yeah, so, that bitch got lit and up. That's another like, one too. Yeah. Period. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> period. You know, like period. So you're done with period, like end of the story, and you're done with lit. I I really do understand. Yeah. It, I do I do under. It does fuck you up when they take a slang word. Mm -hmm. That you, you they take a slang word that is uh has been used to get socked in the face or some shit like that, and now it's like yo, <laughs> it's litty or whatever. Um. <laughs> Like, yeah, I understand like, how that yeah, like, yeah, because I'm like, whoa, growing up, when I was growing up, Liddy, man, oh, somebody's about to get their ass lit the fuck up. No, nah, don't come out fat. Mm -mm. Yeah. Well, that, it's weird, too, because you said that, because, like, um, different, like, we, I, I would use... I would say hot as a negative thing. I was like, oh, man, you hot for that, bro. Like, you bringing heat to a situation. True. Yep, yep. But other people yep. are like, oh, that baby's fucking hot. You know, or like, oh, that track is hot. It's yeah, flaming. or like, yeah, so it's, the shit. Like, yeah, like, what is so that? I, I understand how shit can be used in two different ways, but I... um I think when I think when they beat it to death, it just in the, the other way is no longer. You can't no longer understand the other way it's used. That's when I don't like it. So I'm right there with you on that lit thing. Yeah, and then the, the period thing. Yeah, when that girl came out with that period, uh, period, ooh, bullshit. Uh, uh, that, that, uh, -uh. that. I don't nope. even like the word. I don't even like using periods at the end of my sentences. Now you figure out what context <laughs> I'm using. Now, like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> right, commas in. Just pause. Just do a comma. Right. All right. Peace. Right. All right. I, I, John says we gotta go. Uh, Not just we'll bump man. the top of the hour, man. We'll All just right. bump the top of the hour, man. Fuck you. it. Okay. We got people calling. I hear you. All right, go ahead. All right, let's go with uh, Barbie in Springfield, Massachusetts. Hey, Barbie. What's the word that just 
you're tired of hearing or phrase? I'm tired of hearing 12. 12? Usually is, we call, yeah, we call them 5 hole, the police, but they're yeah. 12 nowadays. Why they call them 12? Like, one, I have no clue and it makes time? no sense. And clutch. I can't stand it. Saying like someone coming through in the clutch, or they just they just like out cold. That's a clutch person, or is it a clutch? I don't know. Like I don't purse? even. I'm trying to understand it. I've been trying to understand it. They mean, oh, he he made a touchdown. That's clutch. Yeah, they're, cl- well, they're clutch I'm players. Like, well, yeah, I don't clutch. even know what that means. That means in the in the fucking in the last minute, in the last chance, the clutching, clutching on to victory. They got it. Like they clutch. It, but you're right. so what you're saying is. It's, that was that was like a a sports that's a sports terminology forever, but now it's being employed everywhere else. Is that what you're saying? I don't, I've never heard it before. It's like one it's of those new things that the kids are saying, like twelve, referring yeah. to the cops. I mean, yeah. it's five old. It's been five old since I was. I don't know. Or uh, popos or whatever. Like yeah, at least I under the popos. It's police. The police. The po- right. like I I understand. Or even I, you know, my homeboys, he'll even freaking call them the Pinocchios. But I know what they're saying because it's the P and he's pointing to it. I understand that. So maybe it came from that. I don't fucking know. That's cap. Where you cap it. I didn't do it. I still don't. I don't know what the cap. I had to go look it up. They said it's from putting all capitals in text to prove a point. Like, I don't know. That's what I would take it as. But they're saying that that means um, you're lying. Yeah, you're lying. Even, yeah, but like I'm that. saying, but I'm saying they were saying like they're putting all capitals because they're like, I don't, that's what I mean. I don't say cap. That's why, because I don't understand it. I know what, why, I know it's said to, for something, but I try to understand the word before <laughs> I fucking use it. And I don't understand cap, so I just don't fucking say it. I uh, don't use it. I don't use clutch, cap, or 12. It's 5 old for life. There you go. <laughs> There you go, <laughs> and that goes back to what Bones was saying about like how men and women have different slang. She don't know clutch because she's a fucking chick and is not watching basketball shit all the goddamn time. So bam, thank you. Uh, let's go. All right, and let's go with Jay Holla in the bay. Hey, my guy, Jay Holla, what up, man? Dude, what the fuck is up, man? It's been a minute. Happy New Year, man. What do you got for us? He's Jay's Happy New Year to you. Hey, yo. Real quick, to uh, piggyback, I remember chicks in the 90s were saying suck my dick, like way back then. Like We looked at them weird, but they used to say that shit. But anyway, my word, yeah. man, can we can we bury 12 feet deep the word vibes? Yeah, or it's a vibe. Dude, that shit alone. Yeah, yeah, bro, it went from like describing something like I'm getting a vibe, this and that, to describing a person like, oh, man, he's a vibe or she's a vibe. Like, when I hear that shit now, I'm like, I just want them to go get electrocuted or some shit. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. what the fuck, dude? Bye. Leave that shit alone. That's the new, that's the new in the building. Jay Hall, I'm in the building. <laughs> now, 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 it's a, now the new shit is, you know the vibe. That's, the, that's yeah. the new in the building. You know the vibe. And that's another one was like, that's some old hippie shit from a, 60 years ago that somehow it just has been beaten into the fucking ground. <laughs> They bastardized the fuck out of it, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. It was like, that was that, oh, that shit man. came from like uh, all the hippies being like, I don't know, man. The guys give me really weird vibrations, man. And that was like when they was yeah. all into the Eastern medicine and you know getting gurus and shit. <laughs> fuck yeah. Yeah. Now, now a person, now a person could be a whole vibe, as they say. Fuck yeah, out of here. That guy's a yep. vibe. How would you describe a person? How what's a different word you would use instead of vibe to dis, to dis, to try to be like? You basically just be like he's his own deal, or like that guy's special. <laughs> I don't know what you're saying. Yeah, like it sounds like it sounds positive though. Like like man, yeah. he's a whole vibe. Like like they like being around him. I guess I don't, I don't try to keep up. So that's my yeah. guess. Cause like they like it's like their aura, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that they're giving off some shit. Yeah, man, that'll be my guess, man. <laughs> there you go, Jay Holler. Yeah, that does. Yeah, that is used a lot. I yeah, like I even I'm trying to describe something, and I'm like, no, I don't want to say it's a vibe, <sighs> and I don't know what else to say. Sometimes, all right, who else? Tia in Philly. 
Hey, we got the guys and the ladies. Tia. Yes, I'm here. Thank you for calling. What, do you, what word do you have for us? <laughs> All right, I got the word bruh. What is that? Bruh. I'm sick of bruh. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to, I don't want to, like, don't say that word. I thought everybody moved on to bro. I thought everyone was just saying bro now. Bruh, bro, I don't want to hear any of that. Like, no, I just think it's so stupid. Like, I I don't know. I just, that just that drives me nuts. Like, I can't do it. Like, my daughter, my son, they're like, yo, bro, bro. And I'm like, what? Don't call your mother bro. Don't call your mother bro. Like, don't do that. Like, I, I can't. These kids nowadays. Mm-mm. What do you do Mm-mm. when you, when they call you? Like, I've never called my mom, like, dude. <laughs> or no, or right? bro. Like, that's what I'm saying. These kids mom. nowadays don't even know how to, how to even talk to you, how to address you. I don't know. My daughter's 19, so I guess she thinks she's grown. So she's like, she's like, bruh. And I'm like, I'm not your bruh. I'm not your bro, you know? But the word is just stupid. I just can't stand it. Look, yeah. Look, man. I can't. Oh, Bro's been and around I just wanted to quick say something yeah. about that pussy word real quick. Yeah. That's from, that, that's what gay people, that's what gay men say, okay? Gay men oh. say my pussy on fire. You know, they say my pussy wet. The gay men speak like that. So whoever he was talking about, that man was gay. <laughs> but, here's a, but like here, but here's another thought though. Here's another mm-hmm. thought to consider. To sound overly masculine for rich people is to sound oafish and stupid. Uh, to sound like too much of a dude. So now we got this whole generation of cats. Like I keep, when I hear them talk, I don't know if they're gay or not, bro. The only time I can tell <laughs> is if they're gay is if there's a dick up their butt. You know what I mean? Like or in their, oh, on their shoulders. Feel. So I can tell it's just, it's a gender fuck thing now. I'm I'm sick of it. Yeah, I can't like they're making it where they don't want anybody to have a gender. That's the that's the real thing here. Oh yeah, that's well, the bigger I, I, picture. I wrote about this like ten years ago, being out in Bushwick mm-hmm. and trying to holler at a chick in front of her man, and I wasn't trying to be disrespectful. I just thought he was a homosexual because the way he spoke mm-hmm. and his mannerisms. Mm-hmm. No, he just was a college guy. He just was a middle class mm-hmm. black college dude, and he just I, mm-hmm. I just thought he was gay. That was it. Like, I was like, oh man, I thought you sucked it, bro. My bad, man. Like, <sighs> yeah, but if he's talking about his pussy on fire, then nah, man, you sucked it. So there we go. Because no, no go. man straight. I don't care where generation you from is not going to say that. Bottom line. Good. Okay. My pussy's dripping now that you told me. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> that's, 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 I love you. Like I am so in love with you. I just have to say that. So I think you're awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I think you're awesome too. Yeah, yeah I'm moist as fuck right now. Wow. <laughs> Do you hear how fucking weird that sounds? It's dripping wet. Man, this combo got me moist as fuck. Like I wouldn't even say. Any, like I wouldn't even say this combo's got me hard. Like it's just weird to apply like some fucking sex shit to. Uh, All right, what's next? All right, you want to have one more? We can go with. Uh, let's see. Uh, Mark, North Hollywood. Mark. Yo, Jude. Let me tell you a word that I'm not fucking with. Sus. Like oh, they're just suspect. cutting like they're just cutting letters out. Could be suspect, suspicious, like subjugated. Like just you know, I'm a 25 year old male in the Latinx community, and I'll tell you, like just words are getting dumber and dumber. Like pop, pro- the yappas. Like I can't even understand this shit. I can't even keep up with it nowadays. I, yo, what's it like being Latinx? How how you liking that so far? You know what? I live in the Los Angeles community, so you know what? It's fairly, you know, as far as being, you know, Hispanic, you know, nobody's really fucking with us. You know, ever loved and, you know, hated in every community. No, I mean, but like, as, you know, like, you claiming Latinx is something people think yeah. is weird. Yeah, you know, just like like you said, your pool. Like old head was talking about earlier, like your pool, who you with, who you around. You know, why the you way claim you... Latin? Why you claim Latinx? Like, you know, just the community I was raised in. You know, I was raised up in Lower State, uh, South Central Los Angeles, yeah. and you know, just always being around. You know, African American. No, I'm saying, you know, but like, why talking. not? Why don't you claim Latino? Like, I don't know. Like, I don't I know. know. I don't know. Like to a bunch of dudes. You, that sound. You sound Latinx. Sound weird. To be honest with you, Jude, uh, my dad, I really didn't know him growing up, but my mom uh, is not Hispanic, but as far as I knew, my father was Hispanic, but from my mother's side, it was, you know, like, 
the tree fell, you know, like the apple fell far from the tree. I don't know mm. where she's from or how that really falls down the line. Huh. But, you know, that's just what I go as. All right, there you go. That's what you're, but Latinx is one of the words that I don't, that irritate me. That's why I was just trying to figure uh, you out. Don't like, like, you don't like that? No, it's like, Lati- okay, like if you're okay. Latino, if you're Hispanic, you're Hispanic, or you're Latino. Like, I don't understand. It just doesn't make sense to me. Uh, I can't, you I can't follow like it all the way through. Half. It's like, you know, like a half and half thing, you know, like someone like is not going to come up to you and be like, oh, I'm uh, I'm half German and I'm uh, I'm half white. You know, it's just like it all falls under one category. So you just categorize it. That's just another thing. It's like everybody's just categorizing it nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right. Thank you. Um, thank you. Yeah, we got, we got any other Hispanic cats on, on the line? Uh, not <laughs> just, that I can see. No, I just want somebody to just address that for me that do, that doesn't claim Latinx, because I, I would All like right. to hear the I point mean, we, counterpoint. Very, I don't care, just drop it. I want to hear. Very good. Just drop it. I want to hear. All right, thanks, bro. Yo, man, that's wild. See, and sus, suspect, sus is suspect, and suspect is could be gay, weird, like some type of something's off. It's usually like yeah, that motherfucker suspect. I don't trust them. I don't trust their motive. I actually learned Suspicious. sus from you. I learned sus from you. Yeah, it was like. And he said subjugated. Like, can you imagine cats out here, man? Man, subjugated out here. I bet you, I bet you we went to college and they fucked his brain up. Man, this shit's crazy, sub. Sub is you filling in there, you submissive. There's my fucking vapey boy. All right, so nobody. Or yeah, we had to dump it. Yeah, it was crazy that he didn't even understand why I kept asking. No, he was. You guys were operating on different different planes. That was fucking wild. And I, <laughs> I was barking your. He doesn't get it. He doesn't. Get I know, it. but I was trying to be specific. That's why I just wanted somebody else to like. I came up in North South Central. Time. You didn't get the call. Did, I'm waiting for someone to call. Uh, I've got Jose in Houston who might want to sell you GHB. So. Oh, Jose wants to sell me GHB? Yeah, but let's see what he. I mean, I'm. I Jose. <laughs> What's going on, Judy? Judy. What up, my Latinx friend? Uh, not much, man. Look here, man. I was, I was listening <laughs> to the episode on Monday, man. I made some calls. Man, I, I found what you're looking for, brother. All right, man. All right, let's, uh, let's take this. Uh, my guy. Yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> uh, uh, there you go. Uh, put put him on hold. Okay, let's put him on hold. Him off the okay. thing. There you go. We got this. Is what we got. Yep. All right. Um, yeah. What do we have? We got a. Uh, Al Profit. Al Profit coming up. No, but I got I to gotta tease something. Yesterday on the show. Or wait, no, no. I, I, am I? Are we going straight into the news, or this is just going straight to Al Profit, and then we you, yeah. are we doing a break? Al's after coming news? up, and then, and then and then maybe we can address that at the at the back of the show. Okay, that's that's kind of what I was. That's what I wanted to know. All right, I got I got something to ask, and then uh, ask y'all after Al Profit and the news. Do not go anywhere. It is the All Out Show. <laughs> Listening to the All Out Show with you. Shay 45, we got a motherfucking legend in this bitch. Al Profit. Al Profit. What up, dog? Detroit's own. That's me. Good to, good to see you, man. We've been trying to put this down since pre pandemic, and poof, seven years later, you're here. Seven years. That's right. Feels <laughs> like it, man. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, it feels like. Well, thanks for years. having me and uh, sticking sticking to it. And by sticking to it, uh, I mean I texted you and reminded you. But here yeah. we are. That wasn't me. That was bro. I can only do so many jobs. That was, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw in my uh, I'm throwing my producer under the bus on that one. When did you move back? So you're back in Michigan, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, are you I'm permanently? In, uh, yeah, but I don't know if I want to be. But here I am. It's kind of like, yeah, you're in L.A. Like, there's a lot of things I don't like about L.A., but then I go visit Michigan. It's like, it's cool being around people I know and love, but, like, you can't live there once you've been in a big city. I mean, yeah, 20 years in between Los Angeles and Manhattan. Yeah, it's rough. I come back. Limited sushi options. 
<laughs> y'all don't even try to get none of that shit like Grubhub to you. It's a it's a wrap, man. It's bad. Hey, you got a choice of Wendy's or Burger King on your Uber Eats? That's uh, I, I even the Arabic food in my neighborhood, like you can't even get decent out of me. It's like, yo, what am what, I doing in, here? In 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 uh. Well, you just can get Lebanese. Detroit is Lebanese food, though, more so than what you got. Yeah, I just call it Arabic. It's a, it's no, a catch-all. No, no, that's no, 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 no. Let me no, no, let no, me no, edu- no. let me educate you here now. Break it down for me. Yes. So uh, there's really two subgroups. Very little okay. of it would be Arabic, meaning coming from Arabia. It's almost all what we would think of as uh, Greek food, Lebanese food. It's Ottoman yep. Empire food. So that's so. All right, that's interesting. So then. Um, Though it's not their food, it's the food of all the de- uh, different civilizations they conquered under their Islamic Ottoman government, and that food spread through all the empire. So things that we think of as being Greek dishes really are Turkish dishes. Some things that are might be Turkish might have came from Bulgaria, and it just all is this Ottoman cuisine. So, but... And then you got, it's funny you say that because I was looking now up. Now you have Persian. Now in L.A. you got the Persian stuff, which is their own culture. Yeah, and, that, and they're Aryans too, so like it's not even Arabic. Um, but, you know, we got Yemeni out here. That's, yeah, they don't have much of a cuisine. It's such a poor country. It's pretty, the cuisine they do have, I'm fucking with it. Oh, you, you go to a Yemeni restaurant? Yeah, yeah. And I can't get So that, that would be, that's actual Arabic because that's from the Arabian Peninsula. True, but like, I, th- I think, what do you want me to say, Middle Eastern food? Is that is is that a better catch-all? Well, I would di- differentiate. I know you said Yemeni. That's what you, that's, be specific. So you like Yemeni food. I like Yemeni. I got, I like Lebanese. One, you, we could even, argue, we can even start the argument though, like a lot of this Indian food came from uh, the Muslim conquerors like samosas and all that shit so you could say Indian food is is an Arabic food or so it has a heavy well it, yeah it definitely has a uh, a heavy influence that's for sure yeah like the shit that we're used to eating you you dig this shit there's some shit called the taste of history taste of history and he just he just bust down like old ass like hey this is what pizza tasted like 700 years ago and just uh, there's like uh, might have might have been that I was looking at recipes that were popular in Europe during like you know 14 1500s yeah. it was because sugar was new and valuable they would just put sugar like if you're rich like oh we're gonna have chicken with sugar sauce like yeah I saw that shit I was like god damn I was like when do we our, our shit was sweet as fuck they put and, sugar on everything and they were covering rotten meat with all that black pepper and nutmeg. Yeah, I was gonna also. It's funny you're gonna say that because I was like, and they they'll bust down some cinnamon, nutmeg, well, like. Well, when you're covering up some mildly rancid lamb, you want as strong of seasonings as you can find. <sighs> Define rancid. Uh, <laughs> Makes your stomach hurt. <laughs> Fucking worms. Rancid <laughs> is Logan. The Paul brothers are rancid. They are pretty rancid. They um, <clears throat> just a bit ago they came out th- that uh, the scam. They're scam. I, I was just watching the CoffeeZilla thing of that. But so one of my, so I guess we're here to talk about some general topic today. And my well, thing that I want to talk about is authenticity and why it's important. Like, who do you trust? Who do you listen to? So on the one hand, it's all fun and games to be entertained by who, you know, as far as like, who might be a tough guy or who's this, that, and the third. But when you start letting everything go, you end up having people who, who common sense would dictate if you grew up in some small town, you didn't go away to college, you're an okay person, you have a job, you work. If it's on YouTube and this guy has millions of followers, it, it couldn't be a scam, right? Yeah. So real people who work for their money, crypto... <laughs> At this point in time, and it's been this way for the last couple of years, I made money in crypto early and got out. The same kind of men that want to believe in crypto, they're like the male version of women who want to believe they're going to be a sugar baby. It's people looking for money to fall from the sky. <laughs> it's funny you say that because I, I, I just, um, I was trying to get drugs from overseas, not even like to get faded off of i just just, just you know try to just experiment just sleep sleeping pills oh, actually sleeping pills. <laughs> i could get the i could get to have fun drugs here but uh just going to sleep very very hard 
and I and I like bought a bunch of those little Bitcoin thingies. And the dude fucked me over one time. I was like, ah, fuck it. And I just one, quit. One sixth of all Bitcoins. This was as of a few years ago. It might be higher now. But a couple years. One sixth of all the Bitcoins that existed had been stolen. And you can't get them back. I had 40,000 well, worth of Ethereum stolen out of a wallet. Get out of here. Well, this. And then, and then about three months after that, I was basically given out of thin air about 38,000 worth of a Bitcoin cash, which is just this new thing they created. And I was like, oh, this is absurd. I was I had money stolen and there's no one for me to call. And now I just was given 38,000 because there was a fork. This is preposterous. I sold everything and got out. I wish I'd have done that. My shit just, I just watched my shit. I didn't, I didn't put much into it. When it's, did you, what, when did you buy it? Bro, I bought it so damn cheap that it was like... Oh, you were buying it? I, I think I bought something at under a thousand when I first started. I, I didn't get it that cheap, but I like I just bought it to buy the sleeping pills. So I bought a couple so I didn't have to deal. I bought I oh. bought a, a, a big chunk of money worth so I didn't have to deal with it. Years forgot ago. about it. And then it went up to fucking 60. a bunch. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then I should have sold, but I didn't. I forgot about it. I looked back and I was like, oh... So what's to, to connect us to organized crime, it may come out with investigation over the next, you know, whatever number of years. It'll be complicated to figure out. Maybe I'll start looking into it. But, um, you know, the mystery of who, who invented uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, of course, people say, well, it was Satoshi, but no one knows who Satoshi is. The CIA couldn't even figure out who Satoshi is. So organized crime, some organized crime entity may have created it because if you look into the same um, sources of news about cryptocurrency that would drive the market, yeah, those the people making the news were connected to whale owners. Mm. And uh, statistical analysis of Bitcoin and Ethereum price movements showed uh, collusion of whales, all sorts of things that would be illegal in a regulated uh, securities market. So when the smart people, when the evil white man woke up in the morning and wanted to, I need to knock off 40 billion right quick. What do you do? So how can I, everyone wants to play investor, but you know, I'm sure you're wealthy enough. If you've been presented with investment opportunities where you got to sign a form where you got to prove you make a million a year, Right. Or you got, or no, you make two hundred fifty thousand a year. Or you got a million in assets, right? So that's how they stop Joe Blow from getting swindled. They figure, huh. yeah, if you've managed to accumulate a million dollars, you make two fifty. I mean, it's not that much, but you're not, you know, you're a little. You must have some sort of ability to look after yourself financially. Let's right. You're like in the top ten, fifteen percent, which is pretty fucking good. Yeah, man. yeah, for sure. So, yeah. um, but with crypto. It, the way it was talked about, referenced, it the average person thought of it. And by average, I don't mean average dummy. I mean even just even a college graduate who's busy with a job and a family and doesn't have time to, you know, and they're seeing it mentioned in New York Times. So it feels, oh, it's sort of like buying a Google stock or a share of right, Facebook. Right. But it's not. It, it isn't. It's not even yeah. like having money in the bank because when it gets stolen, ain't nobody to call. You know the wild shit too for me, like, and I'm sure my producer John is loving hearing you say this shit because he's he's always shit on crypto. But I just didn't know what else to do with the money. Like I didn't know what else to do. Like what do I do? Put it to the streets because that's the only thing I could really like. Well, you could put it in an IRA. Fucking money, like, think about how crazy inflation was at the time. Like I didn't trust the government. Gold well, here, here's, wasn't here's doing the problem. Shit. Here's the thing about not when people say it's fiat currency. I don't trust the government. Government put me in jail. The government has nuclear weapons. If the go if U.S. government falls, your little money and in investment count is the least of your worries. So you might as well believe in it. Well, no, I'm invested in it, but then uh, there's also like I'm just hedging bets. I'm like, you okay. didn't put a big chunk. Well, how much of no. your total portfolio was in crypto? Five percent? Not even. In okay. The, in, oh. in, like, Smart man. And then the growth was the initial investment was. No, well, if you put five percent of your money, that's great. That's that's portfolio theory. Put a couple percent in a high percentage stock. I mean, a uh, high uh, risk reward asset class, but um. That's, and like, look, that's you shit said is smoke it, and you mirrors. Said it, you said it. And, and NFTs we, are even worse. 
Yeah, that was the one play. I couldn't get that far. They came and like, went so okay. fast. I never saw something come and go so fast. That was like, you see a girl in the distance, like, oh, it's a bad bitch. Oh, oh it's a transvestite. Like, it was, you know, um, it, 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 by the time people even knew what it was, it was over. Yeah, that was a, I used to work at Santa, Santa Monica and La Brea 20 years ago, so I know that's that saying a bunch. <laughs> I was like, oh, that, oh shit, beard. Smack. I, I saw I saw a couple of these guys. They're like redoing NFTs to make sense. I don't the, know if they the, they're trying well, to rescan. They they know well, the the word is branded, so they just want to try to say. squeeze like, some money out of it. Well, I would uh, if I was the one that came up with a different word because it's all fuck. Not, it's all nonsense. I mean, let me let me tell you the thing that like some of the people. It's you're buying like a digital thing that actually gives you physical. Excuse me, like worldly access to shit we already outside. have that i mean your mass i mean we already have access to stuff digitally our money already moves digitally and it's and it's insured by the bank no it's not about the money it's about access to shit let's say let's say it's the al profit and i can already set up a website that you have to have a password to get into why does it have to move around on an nft thing it doesn't it doesn't, but it's it a different way to market good. something. Yeah, it's a different, there you go. Now, people, there you people go. are using it to market there you something. Go. It's 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 not solving a problem. There that you needs go. To be solved, but we've we bought pet rocks throughout. You know, briefly, in the 70s. hey, briefly, and they ain't worth nothing now. So. Yeah, but there's always a new there's always a new pet rock. Yeah, but that stuff wasn't presented as that. It was presented as, oh, this is important technology that your pension fund dollars need to go into. See, that's that's why I'm just harping on this. Again, it's fun to have goofy stuff in life, but like this um, decline of just er let everybody say what they want. Nothing has any repercussion. Just people work all their life to have a pension. I mean, my father's living off a Detroit City pension. The city went bankrupt. I mean, he's getting his pension now, but like... Ain't no telling he could wake up one day and, oh, some guy put it in Bitcoin and now it's gone. Like, there's no telling what goes on. Not, yeah. I'm, I, I, the thing is, is, I think it's up to me to save myself. It's not. See, I mean, yeah, theoretically, but, you know, yeah. we're licensed to do. No, no, but, like, life is so complicated, so much going on. You wake up in the morning, you're paying taxes, so, like, oh, I can trust if I go to something called a hospital, a big building in a big city, it says hospital, and there's people mm -hmm. walking around that are doctors. Yeah, they ain't perfect, but they're not some guy at a bar pretending to be a doctor. This is true. But Speaking I think, of, oh, sorry. What's that? Go, go. Uh, yeah, I feel like you and I could talk for fucking. I got a good doctor story for a fake doctor story for you. I Dude. wanted to hear. Go, I wanted to go back to the fucking the influencers. <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to give you an influencer, a uh, 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 early influencer. I was in Oakland County Jail, and there was a guy doing a year for impersonating a doctor, right? Uh-huh. And inmates would ask him for medical advice. I always found that to be, like, very <laughs> meaningful. Hey, man, you got to give it to that dude. Like, He was an influencer, but, like, yeah. because he looked like he, he was, like, a 50-year-old, like, white, you know, he looked like yeah. if you were casting a doctor in a movie, yeah, yeah. like, and these idiot inmates were asking him for medical advice. It's, all you have to do is present yourself yes, in a certain for, way. For most, that's why I like, going back to my authenticity influencers, like, I like, there's two segments of life in society I've done well in and I like being around. Real, you know, like went to Michigan, I got a master's in economics, so like real hard scholastic stuff and actual dangerous street people. Two places where there's real tests that you get given and if you don't pass, there's repercussions. Yes. Everything else is, oh, I'm a, today I'm a man, today I'm a woman, I'm oppressed, I'm this, this is real, I'm going to get free money, I'm a sugar baby, I make NFTs. Yeah, it's uh, the two things you believe in is one where there's like math to back it up and the other one where there's like money to back like either you or full or, 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 or you know or, physical repercussions yeah. that's what i mean you know like uh but there's real world thing there's tangible absolutely and they're serious they're not just things you can talk your way out of like you no. flunked out of school or no you you know Al ain't around no more like yeah 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 that um it's it it's hard for me to, and what you said about what you said about these cats trusting these YouTube people, 
And it's young. I, it's young people too, and it's disturbing. Well, the thing is, is that's all they know. You and I, you're 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 two older than me, but we were, we kind of were at that sweet spot where we knew the light world before a ton of technology and after a ton of technology. We know pay phones and pagers. But, but like I also having a house phone. Yeah, but every that excuse of like. Oh, you know these young people don't know anybody. No, there's this is the lower end of the of the population is getting tricked. Like I know lots of sophisticated, smart young people. They don't go on social media. I'm only on it because I make money. I wasn't until I bumped up my YouTube page. I barely was like, you know, like I don't put any of my real life on. Like it's for making money. It's kind of sh- it's the new crack. Well, yeah, but like think about it like this. I don't, I don't agree with you on that. The, the or how much policy, how much shit? Oh, no, has I didn't been say it's changed. not important. No, no. See, I didn't say no, it ain't said, important. You said, all, you said it's only the young cats, and but it's in, but like so much is just being changed. Oh, I'm sorry. I meant specifically yeah. who the influencers were when we were talking about tricking them out of money and stuff. It's primarily these younger guys. The whole rise of the fake entrepreneurial, you know. <sighs> People don't know, like, Doc, you've been, for you to be sitting there with this show, you're, what, 30, 27 years of being on TV? When did you first go on, Jenny 98, Jones? bro. 90, 90, okay, so 25 years? Like, yes, uh, Yeah. <laughs> I put in work, man, and I had shitty jobs for a long ass time. So. Yeah, and you, had, and, you, and you were on TV when it was like, you had to start off as like, you were the joke, then you got yep. to make jokes. Uh that was when probably people seeing you out and about, like, it was probably like, oh, what's about to happen? Like, it wasn't cool to be, you know, an influ or whatever the fuck word. Like, well, and I really you kind wasn't. of invented, you were like, damn, free. just, I'm I'm sure yeah. if you watch Rude Jude's show, you know who he is, but for those of you who don't know, he went on Jenny Jones as a guest, and then they just, he was so, got, you know, so entertaining to the audience and was able to actually follow through with that because people get called back and then they fumble the ball. He made himself a recurring guest. I don't know if that ever happened and just parlayed that into a hole. Now, if if Eminem hadn't of um, the phenomenon of Eminem hadn't happened, do, do where mm, what difference in your career path would there have been? It's kind of it's kind of interesting because M, you know, M's underground shit was buzzing already, but he blew up. I think a year after me. Well, I meant as far as him, uh, I meant bringing you to Shade 4 or 5. Oh, this shit? I was going to say, like, I, it was well, for the first part that I was answering was, like, him blowing up was almost, like, it was, it was, it did me the wrong way. They're like, oh, you're just trying to be Eminem. I was like, I'm just fucking. You yo, guys man, are from, was, from the same milieu. Yeah, you're like, yeah, yeah, you're the same, yeah. I'm just trying to be myself, man. I'm just, you know, like. And you and came then, before him. But, yeah, I was... He was trying to be rude Jew. I mean, I'm no. sure that there's some small portion of his, like, his his uh, early public persona was, like, taken from part of your public persona, a little taste of it. Or, you, or you know what it is. Let's ca- cats could crack jokes and talk shit, and especially I wasn't really great with my hands, so I had to fucking be able to be able to talk my way out of things. And that was a skill I had to develop. I'm sure he had the same deal, and we both liked each other. And shit. I'll when did you meet? You. Man, early? I met him. I met him like early on at a. Uh, the first time I saw him, he was opening for Souls of Mischief, and Cats really wasn't feeling. Oh wow, feeling that much. Souls of Mischief. Oh, so he yeah, had uh, the Infinite album or something. It, I think it was around then, and it was at Alvin's. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So this is what ninety eight or nine. Or Some shit. And he was bummed that no one really was into his, his shit, and then. He blows up, and then I saw him. He was at like at St. Andrews at a Bam- Bambada show, mm. and that was it. And so, I w- before he got me the job, shout out to my, my Mikey Eckstein. Oh yeah, yeah, Mikey Eckstein. So Mikey helped me get the job. I was riding the bus, tooth riding out of my fucking face. Oh, uh, what were you? Were you were, were you uh, were you riding the Sempta? The Sempta. <laughs> Is that the buses in L.A.? No, no, that was the that was the name of the suburban bus system in Metro Detroit, the Semptic, because you weren't riding a Detroit City bus, you were riding a Macomb County bus, right? No, I was not. No, I was, I was in L.A. at the time. I, oh. had, wheel, I had wheels in Detroit. Man. When did you? Oh, okay. When when did you leave Detroit? What year? Well, 
the suburbs for anybody in the city. Yeah, well, yeah, 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 yeah. When did you leave Metro Detroit? Yeah, yeah, just fucking broad stroke in it. But yeah, uh, let me see, nine, uh, two, 2001. Oh, so, you, so were you making money? Like, what prompted you to come here? Just being on Jenny Jones? Al, I wasn't making no motherfucking money, dog. Like, I would do the show and I was working at. For a second, I was working at, uh, at fucking Did you All work Stars. at Menjo's or something? All Stars. <laughs> oh, why did people call say, man, I thought that was a joke. They said you worked at, I, just, I thought it was true. Not as a dancer, like as the... the... No, I ain't work at Menjo's. No, that's no. what, the, not Menjo's. They had that, no, some, they said you worked at... You a were, gay bar? Yeah, that was like, I Numbers? thought that was standard knowledge. No, I no, no, no. People heard it from, uh, I worked at a gay bar... As a bathroom attendant. Yes. Boom. That's what, yeah, 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 yeah. And, but it was in the suburbs, and it was uh, it was in Ferndale. My my girl was a go-go was dancer it, upstairs. Was it Doug's Body Shop? It was, um, it was the Adam's Apple. Oh, God. No, that sounds terrible. <laughs> I don't know. It was I called did, Temple. I had to deliver a pizza once to Doug's Body Shop there in Woodward and Nine Mile. Yo, it's, it was on that same deal, but like further that. down, it was high end. Mm. Was the other one the Gold Coast? My sister used to go there. Oh, you want to hear? Okay, I got a Detroit crime story about the Gold yeah. Coast. The Gold Coast. The Gold Coast is a, a gang on bar. East Seven Mile. Yep. So yep. one day I'm I'm riding. On, he said, "Call my father." I'm like, "Oh, it's a strip club here. I don't know about the Gold Coast." He said, "Huh? You don't want to go in there? That's an all male review." So you know. So years later, I'm doing. I'm just reading about Detroit mafia stuff and blah blah blah. And Bernstein ended up doing. Uh, did we do it together? I don't remember. There's an article on Gangster Report, and I did a video about it. Yeah, yeah. A guy who was a white supremacist in the '70s in Michigan who was doing hits for the mob. Shot a ham tram at cop, went to prison. When he got out, he was given a job as the bouncer at the Gold Coast and shot some people there in the mid 2000s and is still in prison. No shit. Because, you know, mob all owned and controls a lot of gay bars. And so I don't, I, I assume one of his mafia connections got him a, the white uh, yeah. supremacist, the bouncer job at the black male strip club. They don't give a fuck. It's all about, it's, yeah, it's all about money. If you can make some money with it, that's what's doing and that if shit. you have a, if if you're doing something that's frowned upon, you're a felon, you're a minority, you're right, gay, right. whatever, you're something that society doesn't like at that time. All the better because now I can squeeze you and you don't run to the authorities, just like they did to their own immigrant, you know, brothers and sisters. Yeah, and I honestly like fuck. <sighs> a lot of people get themselves in a situation where they can get where they. Their option is running to the authorities, but ah, fuck me. I'm glad I don't put myself in situations. Yeah, where that's I go that's the key. Tell. You don't want to end up like YSL and find out. Oh, wait a second. All when I was shooting out the window and I was on lean and weed and perks. That wasn't Grand Theft Auto Seven Atlanta. That was yeah. real life. So what 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 went down with that all the way? I didn't even follow. I don't, I don't follow a lot of the the shit like that because. I, yeah, I mean, I don't follow. Follow. I'll just pick and choose. I've been a little bit following that. Uh, it's so they indict. Well, per the Atlanta prosecutor's office, there's a there's a massive RICO against YSL Young Thug's mm -hmm. record label and YFN, which is Lucci didn't end up being as big as Thug, but he was at a time was quite big. They're under RICO, too. Lucci and Wyatt and Thug go, their trial dates start the same day. Some of the, most of the alleged acts in both of their RICOs are violent attacks against each other. Huh. And in Thug's case, there's a wiretap of him talking to a guy, a sex money murder blood in prison in Georgia since 03, when Thug would have been 11 years old, who seems like was somehow behind the scenes Per, this is the prosecutor's story. They ain't been convicted. I'm not saying it's true. Right, this right. is just the prosecutor's story. Behind the scenes, uh, orchestrating this. Who's going to be the blood record label? Who's going to in Atlanta? And right. they killed the Donovan a nut guy. And um, yeah, so gang war. I mean, uh, 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 50 to 100 well, like 100 shootings and, and 30 or 40 murders attributed over seven years to just the beef between these two groups. Now, prosecutors exaggerate somewhat, but not that much. And yeah, now, so now a bunch of guys are, are cutting deals where, oh, Rude Jude, you're looking at 12 years. And then tomorrow we wake up, you got time served and probation? 
Like uh, yeah. about five guys have gotten that in the last week. And they're still around, huh? Well, they're just get they're just oh. walking out of jail. <clears throat> do you, do you, was that was that a um I mean Mason have been going so long. Was that is that a response to like a vacuum once once they pee? Oh no, they weren't selling drugs. These are gang. This is a new phenomenon. These are these are gangs that formed because there was a rapper making money and he swooped up all the bums in his neighborhood and in his family and gave them money and turned them into something. What? And part of the <laughs> entertainment of the music is these beefs. Like there's all these songs uh. made between like Chicago, like. If if I disrude you, yes. and then my someone down with me or me come and kill you or somebody down with you and it's highly publicized, guess whose streams go up? This guy's right here. So hold up, man. I didn't even. I did. You know, I'm I'm old. I don't even look into none of this shit. I don't like to follow a, a bunch. You ever hear back in the day when they would say if someone was selling dope, they would put out the first batch would kill the dope fiends so people yeah, would come? Yeah, they swarm to that shit. Okay, so, oh, we want to put out a new rapper. Okay, so, oh, King Vine really kill, kills people. So that's a built-in entertainment value right there. Yep. Uh, and then there's going to be incidents. We're going to go on. I'm with Al, oh, Al Prophet threaten Rude Jude. And two right. days later, Rude Jude got shot. Oh, shit. Let me go listen to Al Prophet's music. I find that disgusting. And uh, I understand what gangs are just trying to make some money or maybe even protect themselves. But now the gangs are usually just marketing devices. They're literally killing one another. Yes. Like it's wrestling. This well, it ain't wrestling because it's real. But that's but that is the approach they're taking. It's like the WWF approach. You're like, oh, you got beef. Well, with they're me, not be made. Well, they're not really. They're not made up beef. They just get. It, it might be something like we're just some kids in the ghetto and we ain't shit and our gangs ain't nothing and we ain't nobody. But I did shoot your brother when we were fourteen. Fast forward, now we got some money and our gangs become right. something. It's not like in the past. Like when I was doing, started doing music videos in Detroit, it would always be. It was the rapper, and then it was the guy who paid me. And they usually wouldn't be on camera, and they really, right. they'd be like, oh, you know, such and such and such and such. You know, yeah. and then it became the rappers were the shooters, and then right. now the rappers are the guy, you know. Like, when they're talking about, you just got back from West V, did a turnaround. Like, I'll be with him. I'll be like, you know, you did just do that. You probably shouldn't rap about that. Yo, that's the, see, and here's. But that's inter no, but that's to listen. If I'm that's with, wrestling, that's if, my whole point. If, no, no, but it ain't because it's real money and real consequences. It just like if I'm willing, but to they take, need, my point is they don't oh, need that. No, shit. they do though because if you take that away, what them guys gonna talk about? They ninth grade dropouts. That's what I'm saying. That's what that they've literally created this fucking thing so they. Can oh yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just yeah, it's not wrestling in the sense of they, of course wrestling people get hurt. So yeah, so. You're right. It is. It's, it's, it's violence. It's for. It's it's adding violence to to a low level entertainment product to make it sell more. It's it's kind of funny. So it's the violence is real. The beefs are real, but they come from a fabricated kind of like. Oh, all right. I don't know a bunch of. I guess yo. I guess selling. They are making money, but uh, most of the gangs. Are people that were clicked up had were were touching some type of vice, shakedown stuff like that. And, hey, the um, music is the music is the vice, and it's been it's been. I mean, the but music is the vice. It it is a kind of a perverted thing where you got this shit where uh, gangster rap, the, the or whatever the fuck you want to uh, call it. They were like, yo, man, we just reporting on what's happening in the streets. We're not glorifying shit. Well, it, was... it morphed into, well, here's the thing. Get, yeah. Once the balance, and let me backtrack a little with the YFNYSL thing. Really, the genesis of the violence between those two groups specifically was that a guy named Big Nut, who he was a blood gang leader of like real gang members, and he was involved in the music industry. He was partnered with Rich Homie Quan's father. They were managing Rich Homie Quine. They took YFN to get a deal. They didn't want to mm. mess with YSL and Thug. And Thug was on the phone with that other guy in prison. And then that's when violence broke out. So it really wasn't manufactured. It was about who was going to get record deals and stuff like that. Now, where's the corporate responsibility? 
Kevin Lyles was got on the stand and was crying, trying to keep Thug out of jail so he could make more music. So he could make more money. Yeah, but where? I mean, you mean to tell me if if you had a son, if you had a 23 year old son who right now is indicted for seven murders and had 10 million dollars, and you sat right there and be like, "Oh, he seemed like a regular kid to me," like we'd be like, "No, you're lying, dog." Yeah. Right? So these corporate people. They know how much money these guys are making. They know what does and doesn't make sense. They, you know. So now you expect corporations to have a fucking conscience? That's crazy. No, we have to make, well, no, we have to make, we have to, it starts with talking about it and we force them just like, uh, you know, people don't remember when we were little, the, you know, people make fun of like Jesse Jackson and all that now, but like. They had the black and other people, consumers in the U.S., boycott businesses that were doing business with South African apartheid government. And Coca-Cola right. and that were like, oh, we ain't fucking with South Africa no more. And the apartheid government fell. So, you know, consumers don't, people are busy with their regular lives. It's the job of people like me and you who ain't got no life. This is our life, information and talking about stuff to... You know, maybe it starts the process of like there right. should be some thought of accountability of like well, you know. Well, no, but look, man, like like the the consumer don't give they do not care is the thing. And well, they don't have know. time. It's first of all, it's, it, most yes, of they, them when the music, they, most of them are under eighteen, so it's not it's someone else. I'm talking about the. Con- I'm talking about the consumer, the person that buys. No, I know. And plays. In terms of the mu- music, though, most of them are under 18, so they're supposed to be protected. Well, no, I mean, I, no, nobody that decides what's played on our channel is under 18. So no, clearly, no, the listeners, the listeners. That's what my point is is like everybody's accountable, and and the other thing too is like they're just told what to care about. Half these people don't care about people yelling faggot off of the stage, but suddenly. You know, hey man, if you go see this dude, you might and, and they upload that picture, you might not have a job tomorrow. There's nothing attached to that, based on like, hey man, we shouldn't be fucking. It shouldn't come to fucking murder when, it's it shouldn't come to murder to sell a, sell a album, and we shouldn't be celebrating this shit. But we just no one cares, and well, I try no, to speak on it. Oh well, it's it. I mean, it's worse than don't care. Like the. It's paid for. The mur- mur- especially violence amongst the America's black population has been glamorized so long. It looks fun. Like watching it on the music video, going up in the projects and going to your friend's funeral and then getting retaliation. I mean, it looks kind of fun. Like, you know, if you don't know better, I could see just sitting somewhere, you're seeing this on TV, like, oh, that looks kind of fun. Right, but if you if you showed white people who do the same things, but if it would look like, oh, this is depressing. This who are these fucked up people? Because uh, we're just trained. We're just these. We're just we're used to seeing that glint. When you have like Denzel Washington play Frank Lucas, well, Denzel Washington really can't play Frank Lucas because Frank Lucas was a brutal horrible, ignorant, unlikable person. As soon as you have any movie star, any kind of handsome, charismatic guy play those roles, Al Pacino's Tony Montana, whatever, right. it makes us something that's not. I mean, I know a lot of those type of guys. They're disturbing. That's one of my, like, it's funny, like, biopics or biopics, what the fuck biopics. they call them? The biopics. This doesn't sound as good to me, but I'm, we'll go with biopic. This your show, my guy. <laughs> Habibi, this your show, my baby. No, but no, I appreciate you um, correcting me. No, I don't know. I just made it up. I now, think it's you're both. Right, though. I think it's like Caribbean and Caribbean. What are they? It's uh, both. It's, yeah. There is. It's, I'm it's remix either. that shit. All yeah. right, bet. So yeah, like uh, picks. They're worse than they're worse than history books because fucking. The regular Joe will go see that shit, and they think, think they're watching real. a goddamn documentary. Yeah, and you're picking and choosing, you know, what's... In, like, I was sitting... So, the guy that Frank Lucas stole most of his story from, Ike Atkinson, or well, the interesting part, the part about being black and going to Thailand and getting his own drugs, which Frank Lucas did not do. Wait, hold up. Let's... Boop. All right. Let's... All right. Out Prophet, about to tell you all, all the bullshit in that... Frank Lucas movie American Snitch American Snitch stuff. here it is okay so per Rude Jude was saying about how the people watch these biopics and think they're getting like history information it's 
and you could think like, well, it's just a movie, but like they're doing stuff, you know, movies about slavery, like serious issues. So anyways, an American gangster, first mm -hmm. of all, they knew they couldn't put a movie out that was going to have appeal to certain segments of the population starring a guy who was an informant. So mm -hmm. they made up the story of Frank Lucas didn't tell on any street guys he told on all corrupt cops. Well, in fact, Frank Lucas didn't tell on one cop, and he did tell on a bunch of street people. He was such a rat. One case he made, Rude Jude and Al Prophet are both, we got separate drug organizations, but we buy our cutting agent from the same uh, uh, guy. The cutting agent itself is legal. Mm. You sell heroin over there, I sell heroin over there. Because we both buy our cutting agent from the same guy, and Frank Lucas told the feds, now me and you get rigged up into an even bigger conspiracy and get more time, even though we don't know each other. So wait, he was he was loop, he was looping pe people in onto in, on uh, Rico's oh, that didn't even yeah. know each other. Oh yeah, there's a I found that court document of that. Oh, Frank Lucas was awful. So I was sitting in Ike Atkinson. Ike Atkinson was a U.S. military guy. He retired. Uh, when he was about 50 in the early 60s and he was part of this circuit of black GIs that were gambling and stuff and he, as the heroin shit got going in the mid 60s he started shipping from Thailand mm -hmm. that's whose story Frank co-opted for his whole I went to Thailand well I was Ike Atkinson did about 37 years in prison I was sitting in his living room with Ron Chepsik he had just got out because he had retired from the military he had a military pension even though he did all that time in prison when he got out of prison he was able to get like a little apartment and outskirts of durham he was like 85 mm. american gangster had just come out and he's like shit this stole my thought you know like no one wants to hear about me and we're sitting in his living room and the phone rings and it's richie roberts that's the character that russell crowe played the white cop okay. so they all stayed friends because you know they got this hollywood movie together so frank mm -hmm. lucas the real one and richie roberts and ike were like talked and Richie Roberts would help Frank Lucas out with his legal stuff. And he called Ike when we were sitting there. He was like, oh, I just had to sign a plea agreement for Frank uh, to go do, do probation because he was ste he had ran through all the money he got from American Gangster and he was yeah. stealing his son's disability check because his son wasn't named Junior. His son was like named Frank Lucas also. And when he got was getting some like disability check in the mail and, and the father would just steal it. He had already ran through the money. And that woman, that Puerto Rican woman he was married to in the movie, she's just in federal prison right now. She tried to do a drug deal like eight or nine years ago. Yeah, that tells you the type of dude he is right there. That's a, you, he got a talk. house. He got a, They bought him a house and they gave him $900,000. He ran through all of it and then was stealing his son's social security check. Well, how would you describe him back in the day then? Because that sounds like... Oh, he had a big drug ring. Like he was a had a big drug ring in Harlem and Newark, uh, but he was supplied by Ital every indictment he was ever in. It was Italian suppliers and him. But he was a very big drug dealer. He, how do you, how do you? But that's not you, that interesting. See, that's a dark like. Uh, oh, he's a black guy in the seventies who sold uh, heroin in Harlem and bought mink coats and went to prison. Well, that's not that exciting to mainstream society. So they had to piece. They'd go, okay, well, there was this other black guy that went to Thailand, and yeah. I, now let's throw his story in with him. Let's not make him be a snitch. Let's put in dirty, corrupt white cops, and you manufacture a I'm history old. that's yeah. interesting. They, they, I think, they, I think they did that with the the Martin Luther King movie. Oh, Selma. Yeah, creating like some invisible beef with the president, which is kind of a bad look. It, it was a yeah. You know, it's funny you notice that. So you must be a a, a, a a true student of history because to it was like Martin Luther King did it all despite Lyndon yes, Derry, or odds. he had more. <laughs> The reality is, you know, the it's a it's actually is a good thing that in the end. So my understanding of what went on was that whether Martin Luther King and Lyndon Johnson discussed this explicitly or they both tacitly let it happen, it was right. pretty brilliant. Where they said, okay, if we let him go through the South and do these marches, it's gonna the white people in the North like the. The okay white people, maybe who ain't the greatest, maybe they if a black person moved next door. But when they see the Alabama state troopers beating old women over the head on the news, they're going to be like, oh, no, 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 no. This can't go on in America anymore. <laughs>
<laughs> That's a bit too. It's a bit much. No, no, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's a bit much. <laughs> Our prophets here. We just chopping up, talking uh, kind of how pop culture and, uh, and lies. street culture lies. That's it's, why people are attracted to watching street stuff, crime stuff. That's why going back to the music. If someone's like, "Oh no, he's really, he's really from such and such," it makes it probably more likely you're not lying. Yeah. Like me yes. really being from these, like okay, I couldn't be too goofy. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, and that's what, that was one of the things I that was like you was way deeper in, in shit than I was, but I don't speak on a lot. I don't speak on half the shit you speak on because I wasn't touching those things, and it drives me crazy to see these DJs and like you know. Um, f- most of the popular most of the popular like youtube guys uh fucking what's his name um the oh. black dude oh academics academics and then the fucking adam 22 even vlad now it's just like yo bro like i i just peeped some of his shit i like not some putting of- any effort what what i what's bothered me about it like vlad was good when he was doing mu- just music because he would had been a dj he could ask questions That's, but i can yeah. see now he gets all these any black celebrity of any and you could tell that he like read a wikipedia entry for five minutes and he's oh, uh, so you're black and grew up in the south what was that like like you yeah. know the questions are like not you know don't that, well, and then he had the nerve to be upset farrakhan like who is farrakhan to have to come do your show Wait, Farrakhan. He, he was upset that, like, got, Farrakhan. He got, he, he got mad that Farrakhan said that. <laughs> How dare you? Don't you know I'm Vlad? And yeah, I, Vlad I called no me once him. on the phone, and the way he told his bad social skills, he was trying to get a phone number from me. And it just, the way, like, listen, if I'm trying to use you, like, I want to fuck your girl, I'm at least, like, hey, dude, what's up, buddy? Uh, you hey, know man, what? We, we need to catch up, man. Yeah. Let's go have a By the way, man, let me get so and so's number. No, it was yeah. just, hey, give me someone's number. And it's like, what? Right. Yeah. Yeah, and well, my thing is this: I feel like a lot of a lot of cats that really weren't in certain things cover shit in a way that's irresponsible. Yes, that, now that that's that's, I feel a sense of response. Like, listen, I can take you back to like oh eight when I stopped doing music videos and I was getting into documentaries. Let and, me pause you right there. Because you were doing music videos in Detroit, mm. which is... In like 04, 05. Yes. Like, I was one of the, like, hood vid that, you know, like, hey, the dope man got $700, I'm going to pull up to the vid. Like, I was yep. one of the people in America that was the first people doing that. When the first well, in front of a house with everybody out there, that was like... Blank, and that became a fucking thing. They're now they're made. Drake makes every half of Drake's videos are fake. You know, we just pulled up in the ghetto and happened to make a video, and it looks like this type <laughs> videos. Like, <laughs> you know, it's, he's using the Al Profit template from 08. Show the street sign. You know what I mean? Yeah. The fucking the popular party store that everybody be at, be out front of that bitch. Well, we were the, man, psh, we were doing it back when like it what like it wasn't a th- like who the fuck's outside with a camp like. You had to be the neighborhood boss to even be able to shoot a video, because if you weren't, people were like, the fuck is outside with a camera? What are these people grouped up for? Yep. Yeah. So I, I cut you off to say that just so people can really understand what you're, what, what, how you, that you're comfortable and you're getting passes out of nowhere, not out of nowhere, but to these people. And that's why I wanted to bring you on, so you, because you can speak about this shit. Oh, yeah. I mean, my first documentaries, I mean, the way I, the interview subjects, I mean, they're older than me. I didn't know them, but like almost everybody, I had some, they were my friend's uncle or they were some type of, or from the same. Like when I went to interview Boone, that was like a seven minute drive from my father's house. It was just me and my boy and Boone and his sister in the kitchen with the boom mic like this and strap. You know, Boone's like a hitman. Hitman, if you will. <laughs> well, not if you will. I mean, he confessed yeah. to twenty some murders and did the time. So, yeah, but you dig even that. I'm like, how does he describe? Him? I'm trying to like, I know what he is, but I don't know how he's described. Uh, what he said? He said no. He he calls a uh, professional killer, murder yeah. for hire. You got the money, we got the gun. <laughs> and so, what's that like for you watching these cats doing interviews? Do you, do you, I don't, I mean, I, you know, I, 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 it, it, if it's one of those things like it, you could let it bother you and, oh, they make some, you know, they're making easy money, but 
I make plenty of money and like it's I have a good money, and, I, and I I make a fair amount of money and I have a good reputation. Like that's what I mean. It's a I'm in LA. I'm not from LA. I get to go play. I made real friends with some good people here. Like I bop around better than people in LA. Not because I'm tough, but just. I naturally meet people and nobody's like, oh, you're the one who did that bullshit. We're going to fuck you up. No, I don't do dumb shit. Not a predator. Because yeah. I all I ingrained in me the things that these people are doing. I guess the power of the camera and fame like insulates people from repercussions. But something bad is going to happen to somebody and the cat will be out of the bag. But a lot of them are spending a lot of money on security. They're in armored down buildings and you know they got they 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 got different people around that's getting money and blah 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 and that's fine i mean but you gotta ask yourself if you're engendering like one good thing about like if rough environments like if you're from that and you're like you know not doing anything bad and people like like people gonna protect you just they gonna be like nah everyone's your security so if you need to always oh we going somewhere we gotta pay three people with guns to be with us or else this is gonna happen like what are you doing you know yeah I, some of these cats too I feel like he's set up Tariq Nasheed and Tommy Soda I mean Vlad is a you know orchestrated you know physical conflicts and I'm not gonna tell any stories about any of these guys, but people, you know, have been like, "Hey, boop, boop, boop!" Like famous people that I interact with that were inappropriate, to, you know. So maybe that stuff will come out one day. I don't know. But who do you find to be like? Uh, who do you academics find has gotten better. Like I like what he. The only thing I didn't like about academics is the tone when he was. He got big off the war in Chirac thing, talking about the yeah. camera, and the way he would describe the it was very derogatory not that gang members killing each other should be talking about that great but like just keep it neutral like i just i don't sugarcoat descriptions of people but i don't i just try to keep it neutral yeah rude jude killed two people i don't that crazy mf or rude jude you know that's when you start you know it's, you start bothering well, people well yeah you're now you're casting you're 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 doing you're, too much yeah, you're getting money off of death and like it's and not just like hot, I'm you're reporting. You're putting hot but, sauce on a dead body is unnecessary. Just, yeah, you know yeah. I mean? Like when when he hears, I, he gave me the feeling like when people would get killed, he'd be like, oh shit, about to drop a new video. Oh you no, because I actually have paint. Listen, I, all this year I was struggling as the dead rapper of the week bandwagon sped up. I was struggling with okay, like I'm looking at them making easy, you know, and like I did a few things that you know like probably just out of like fear of missing out but i i always i didn't get too far into that so but it's a temptation um but yeah they're waking up there listen their content is guided off of uh, uh search volume so they're right. they're making stuff off of that and they're calling hey this this sour tea sweetie whatever her name is is uh her, she's trending because her album sales were low. So let's mm. pair to do an interview about her low album sales. And then when she says no, he was mad about that. Huh. And my only thing, I just want these guys to think. I'm not, to be honest, I don't want them. I mean, I could do it. See, going back to the beef thing, I could create some beef to anybody. I don't want, I would just say to everybody and not just to and smaller people and myself. We were just one day we're making content and then some of us you realize, oh shit, I'm kind of important. A lot of people listen to me have some sense of responsibility. Uh and if a thirty year old, if AR Ab wants to go on Vlad and self incriminate himself and send himself to prison in exchange for brief popularity as a rapper, well that's on him. But if I'm a nineteen year old who can't read and write that good. My first trip on an airplane was to come get interviewed on some YouTube platform. And, oh, so your mother was a crackhead and you're a crip, huh? What's that like? And it's like, oh, and I can't really turn opportunity down because I'm still living in the ghetto. Like, you know, so I'm going to fly you to the big city to get interviewed. You got to do it. They got no one around them to look out for them. And, uh... I don't know, man. I, yo, you an adult. You want to be a little man? Run around here. These are man decisions, bro. Like you can't. No, bro, as somebody, I, no, as somebody who almost get, did got life sentences when I was seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and been around a lot of people who who have and all that. Yeah. You know, 
uh, in re- in normally functioning healthy American families, I can't people, I can't I, people I can't judge people for. based on how healthy their family is, man. No, I, no, no, no. Just... I'm saying like people. You're right theoretically, but like you know, I, hey, I just choose to do what I do. If I'm sitting no, talking you, with I've... a guy and I feel like, because a lot of people be like, Al, you cut people off. Sometimes I stay going down a road where I don't really want them to even say that stuff for future reference for themselves. So well, I, well, that was, I, that's what I was gonna say. Like I don't, I don't really like talking to cats about this, that type of shit because I don't want to be a part of it. That being said, I keep it historical, sociological. Like I'm a, yeah. hey, you know, I you could go through all my stuff. Do I have some stuff here or there that might have been lazy? Yeah, but for the most part, you you really watch my stuff. It's like, oh, I learned something about history and all. And no, I, bro, that's why I, crime that's why to I make it exciting. You. But just that's why I, I know I appreciate I, it. But I mean, that's why you are. <laughs> but to bring people on somewhere and just be like, so tell us about when you got shot i can't believe that they them guys even well this is my what you were talking about authenticity this is my problem it's these so-called authentic rappers who might not be that's running to them like oh boy that was just in in, um i think he was locked up he's you know they were they were treating him poorly oh honeycomb brazy i forgot his name they had him on like they wouldn't let him talk to nobody He's like hashtag Adam twenty four. Like he starts, he's like begging to. He's, he's hollering at fucking phonies to, to get his shit out. So like, out of desperate. Well, it's, see, it's everybody's fault, you know. Well, like what, desperate. See, that's what the predi- Like, the desperation, you know, and and you underestimate how much of a rock that a lot of America's living under. Like, having driven in a car to a lot of different parts of America, boy, like, you might as well be in another country as a, in a lot of these places. I, no, I do understand that, and I understand that every anybody's capable of anything. I get that. But at a certain point, it's nobody... The, the people that are giving him, giving these cats credibility... Oh, who are they? Well, no, that's that's now nah, that's I'm, a good point because now, so let's look at social media in general. So, if me and you agree to not call each other out on our lies and we're just gonna hype each other and lie ourselves up, yep. Now it appears well, Al didn't say Rude Jude was lying about blah blah blah. And Rude didn't yep. say Al was lying about this, so they both must be, and it's just regular, mostly kids believing us to be something we're not so that then we can sell them an NFT or something, you know. The urban NFT collection. Real <laughs> NFTs from the hood. Uh, that's, that's like a rapper, uh, rapper chips NFT rapper shit. Rapper chips, yep. yep. So. Yeah, it's, I guess that's what I mean. Like, the, the people complain about them and then the people in the industry themselves co-sign them and then you got young people hollering at them so well, there's real people in the street that don't participate in the music. I mean, that's a that's a. But it, that's the thing. Yeah, that's I. I'm not saying that, but they don't. No one else understands that. When you see like a a, a cat from the soil, like actually talking to one of these dudes, all right, he seems legit. And then the other cats are following. And then some some of these cats, I don't. Even, I feel like they'll hire just a black person to stand next to them to to oh, legitimize. That's, them. No, no, no. Listen. I remember it's funny you say that. Once Drugs Inc. was trying to hire me to like help him do a show, it, the, the the show came out. I haven't watched it because I don't. I didn't understand it. They, it was the episode was about drugs in Detroit on Halloween. I don't understand what that means. Well, they're trying to like I, they're trying to probably mix fucking uh, Devil's Night. I, I don't and, know, you know, and drugs. So I got them as I'm sitting there talking to them of what they want me to get me to do. I'm thinking like so. They can't say this out loud because it would sound too crazy, but it was like, get a black guy to put a bandana on his face and say he sells half the drugs on the west side of Detroit and we'll give him $400. I mean, that's basically what it was. That is know? exactly what they're doing, yeah. And this, th- there was a term for it, but like they did that shit back when fucking Shirley Temple was around. Mm-hmm. You know, she'd be like dancing and black people be clapping for her and that's a cosign. Yep. Boom. Yep. Off a, paid, a paid, a uh, paid. An interesting example of that, I learned about doing my Jimmy Hoffa documentary. Huh. Jimmy Hoffa, 1959-60, got caught red-handed on camera in Washington, D.C., uh, bribing a guy posed as someone stealing documents from Robert F. Kennedy on right. an investigation of Hoffa, and Hoffa's like, yeah, I want him. I'll meet you. 
but it was an FBI plant, and he gave him the money on camera like he was caught. So he goes on trial. It's 1959 or 60. Washington, D.C. was the first city to become uh, over 50% black. So a federal trial in D.C. probably in 1960 was about the only place in America a white man was going to be judged by a predominantly black jury. Yeah. So they had Joe Lewis come from Detroit <laughs> and go into the and walk up to Hoff in front of the jury. Thank you for all you've done for my people. Not guilty. Now, is there now the question then becomes though, people would say, so what? Hoff, if if some black people got to exercise some power and they wanted to, hey, this Hoffa helped some gave some people some jobs in Detroit, we don't care what the federal government says, we're sending them home. You know, that's jury nullification. But yeah, so Yeah. It happens everywhere. Shit, even on Jenny Jones. Like I, I look, man, they wouldn't bring me back unless I made people laugh, but please believe, look at the edits. Oh, it was made to look. Sometimes it was made to look different kind of way. Yeah. Well, no, it's it. it I put it. They amplified uh, it. Yeah, or like you, you go to a comedy show, right? Uh, somebody cracks a joke, somewhat racy. What do they cut to? The black dude laughing oh, in the audience. Oh yeah, like, yeah. Oh, I'm allowed oh, to that laugh makes at it that. Okay. Yeah, and he like, might have been like, la and it might really, if the editing's really shady like that, it could be, he could be laughing at a different joke. Oh yeah, please believe it. Yeah. It's like they don't give a fuck. Yeah. Like. And that's the thing. No, you're like, right. You it's okay if, yeah, have so and so come stand on the stage. It's cool. I wouldn't have thought the n the n word moved into somewhat common usage. Pretty like, you know, smooth and no, easy. Just, like, I don't know, man. I just remember that being. I really never said it, but that was just like I just heard street dudes say it, it wasn't. Yeah, even, no, it wasn't even. You're right. No, it wasn't even. It was just a, some street shit. Me and Cavario were talking about. I can remember. I mean, I was living in. One of America's uh, highest black population centers like, in the like mid-80s when I was yeah. eight, nine years old. People did yeah. not. I mean, it was said, but it was like, who are them in? Where is it? The liquor yeah. store with the gun. Like, it wasn't. Yeah. You just said it all day. Like, and I, me and Cavario were talking about how it wasn't until the mid-90s. We both remember hearing the phrase real inward. Like, he's a real yep. inward. And we, we were like, what the fuck is phrase is that? I never heard that. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> It's not a real, that's not a phrase from the streets. I don't know what that, or it, the streets of Jackson, Mississippi or something, because that, Yo, I, I like never it, heard that. It, I, a lot of times that should have just come from a rap song, and yep. then it'll come from. And then from, it becomes the streets. Yo, I, I, I got fucked up with that, with that say less shit. Like, I didn't know, somebody told me to say less. Um, Drake actually told me to say less. Oh, you thought it was like an, an attack or something? Yeah, I, told, I was trying to hook him up with this say less, thick ass red bone. He's like, "Say less." I'm like, "Motherfucker!" Like I never heard of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Say I less. Cause, got... Say less, because I'm gonna do more. But it can be aggressive, because well, you might say something. Hey, you better, you better not come around here. And I say, "I'm gonna say less. I'm gonna say less and do more." So it could yeah. be. Well, and I, I just never heard but of he that. But he meant shit. it like, "Say less, my friend. I'm on it already." Yeah, and I was like, "Where?" I never heard of it. And then a lot of people was like, "Well, it got, it got real popular from some Amazon show." And I was like, "Oh, oh, that's what that came from an Amazon show." That's what I'm. So, that's what the people told me. That's what the callers told me. Cause a bunch of old dudes, like old ass, they're like, "What?" They ran into the same thing. Like some kid just told them to say less, and they're like, "What?" Motherfucker? Like I'm the plug, dog. Say less. Fuck. Like bitch, I'm helping you out. Like fuck out of here. Say less, big dog. <laughs> Had that money nah. tell me by Tuesday. Say less, big dog. Hold on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just funny how where slang comes from now. Oh, and and, and my, I, I, people think the word urban means black. Like some people think that that's what that word means. No, I mean city. It means city. <laughs> Correct. Yes. But that was introduced by fucking like radio stations. Yeah, I don't know. They, urban they, format. They wouldn't yeah. say black music. They would say, the oh, best it's urban. Best in urban radio. You're like, all right, you mean like black? Like, yeah. And now it's, now it's, they're, they loop, they got rid of it. Now it's going black, back to black music. Yeah, but people think, literally a lot of young people think urban means black. And that was a top down decision. So many, so much of our shit Especially like with with rap and shit like that, it was a fringe thing. It was on the fringe, so these would all be bottom up things. Like yes, that's what made it interesting, right? It's from where did it come from? We don't know. It just got cool in Harlem in '82, and it was interesting and exotic. But now you're right. It's like made up. It's like Rude Jude and Al Prophet told some rappers, "Hey, start saying this." The, look at Adidas. 
that was that was a bottom up. My Adidas, they like Adidas, where they're from, they rock that shit. They blew up Adidas, and that doesn't really happen like that anymore. Now it's now these cats are approaching rappers like, hey man, where these shoes shop? Oh, how that about shit oh up. no, how about you become a rapper to promote to, with the idea of I'm just gonna get popular and then I'm gonna sell something. Like that's mm-hmm. really people's game plan now. Like I'm gonna get famous for something and then I'll figure out something to sell. So then it can become, oh, well, I'll be gay on TV and fight in a house full of gay. <laughs> like, the Zeus, you know, the Zeus Network is like the number four. Okay, you know that show, uh, L.A. Al, Bad Boys Club? I don't watch anything, but I'll listen. To, I'll, I'll go on and listen to you. Okay. I don't know any new Zeus, shit. Zeus Network is a cable. It's a brand new cable network, and it has all... It appears to, it has a couple like shows that are popular. I, I'm not trying to be funny with the description. I mean, it's like, it's the uh, gay urban real housewives. You mean gay black? Primarily, but then they'll okay. have like, the, they'll have like the, the hood white boy rapper who raps oh, about yeah. selling his pussy and points Ooh. at his groin. Ooh. William DeBattist. <laughs> Look him up, William DeBattist. The thickest white boy. That's his Instagram uh, 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 handle. The thickest white boy with two C's. He might be a crip. That's it. yeah. That's that shit that kills me. Everybody spelling, spelling shit with two C's like they're fucking uh, gang related. Don't like, want to say CK. Stop, yeah, it's like no. I'm yeah, just... no, stop. No, he's a yeah, right. So he's a white male pro- or he raps about being a male prostitute, but he's a gang member. I don't know. I, you know, maybe. I mean, Maybe yeah, his pimp like, is. I don't know. So, I don't know. Yeah. But anyway, so Zeus Network is the number four cable network, or so. like it's it's like getting more views than like Fox now. Not that Fox is good, or but I'm just saying like I mean, that's a that's a name I've heard of. I yeah. haven't heard of Zeus. So it's, it's if you wa- I've I want heard you to I don't want you to watch like I don't watch these shows. I'll just watch the trailer. I keep abreast of what's going on in pop culture because you don't yeah. need to watch them. You could oh well, their breakout star Roland Ray. Look up Roland Ray. Roland Ray is disabled in a wheelchair <laughs> transvestite <laughs> who is very Stop. foul like so Stop you know how it. the culture of like hood uh. hood transvestite gays is to be like very aggressive and talk shit about people well because Roland Ray's in a wheelchair he's the one who gets to talk to them like that yeah, he, oh, he's uh, he's extra turned up. Oh, you, could, you can't even you can't smack him around. I can't do nothing. Yeah, and he's small, yeah. like he's like real small, like. <laughs> and and here's the thing: you, on the surface, you could say, "Oh, well, it's good." Uh, you know, a person with physical challenges is getting fake. No, nah, no, man. but their per their rolling right personality a- is so awful. So you've 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 taken what's so the mind is interested by a couple different things: novelty. Or novelty of juxtaposition, so it's hard to come yeah. up with something new. But if I can put two things together that which no one ever saw, like a real unlikable, rude, awful transvestite who's in a wheelchair and is heavily disabled, oh my God, my brain is stimulated. It's right, a new right. drug. <clears throat> And I'm allowed to like this person saying mean things yep. because we used to be able to like people that would fucking blaze each other. They can't do that no more. So unless they li- unless they're them. Unless they're a cripple in a dress in a wheelchair and then sassy boy just murdering cats. <laughs> so they rap. So it's sad, though, to like when you see it in the in the board, like what they're doing has nothing to do with uh, being gay or like they're dressing. Like, listen, I grew up in the ghetto in the 80s. Like I know what prostitutes dress like. They dress like prostitutes in the, and behave like prostitutes in the ghetto in the 80s, which is what a lot of their mothers were. And they're rapping about selling their pussy. This is boy rappers. I sell well, my pussy. Like this. Hey, yo, and it's in the going back to the other thing. Like yo, a lot of a lot of the 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 black the black uh, trans. I don't even know. That seems like a marketing. Like what, what, where did these people all come was... from? Like I, I in your in my whole life. I really can't think of anyone calling me, hey, Al, you know our boy such and such. Turns out he's, and there's nothing wrong with any of that, but like you would think from pop culture, like 7% of the U.S. population are like transvestites or something, and they're not. 
I know that it's over. That's not even the right word. We're already in trouble for that word. I know. I was like, I can't even say. I'm trying to. I say shit. I say tranny when I don't give. A, when I'm not trying to prove a fucking point. But if I'm trying to get somebody to listen to the bigger idea, I have to come up with the right word, well, and I can't figure it out. When when I when I like. I have a very big vocabulary, and when someone referred to me as, or no, I saw that cisgender, I was like, fuck, cisgender, and I looked it up, and it just means, oh, you're heterosexual, and I thought, oh, so wait a second, so mean, the yeah. default is heterosexual, why did a new term have to be made up for the default to you know try why. to make you feel like it's not the default? Yes, it's like, you mean normal, just the regular Joe that... Help populate this world over the last fucking overpopulate a root and destroy the animal kingdom. That's why Fuck we, the animal kingdom. You dog. know that's like, one of the conspiracy theories oh, oh, of yeah, the yeah. promote. <laughs> no, but that yeah. is like there are people you can see people on YouTube like uh, zero like humans shouldn't have children because we're a pox on the earth and we should we should holocaust ourselves by not having any children at all and promoting same gender. Uh, uh, I, look. I agree, and they should kill themselves first. Yes. And just trust yeah, get the, me. Get the I'm party ex- started. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna. Yep. I'll kill myself right I'm after with you. you. No, and get the, par- your, get the your party family? started, my G. Yep. Yeah. Everybody, those cats. I, I just had one of them. They want attention. A lot of people got money shot. Listen, I, I, I want all the viewers. If you learn nothing from my stream of consciousness today i want you to look up munchausen syndrome on wikipedia and then also look up the book the society of the spectacle i don't expect for you to be able to handle reading it but just read the synopsis (laughs) and those two things will help you understand a lot of what goes on in a modern and controls politics and uh what, what you're seeing in social media munchausen syndrome is simply uh create me uh Munchausen by proxy, you might have heard of that. When women will murder their infant, like a like Jan's baby died, and then it comes out, well, Jan went in the hospital room and smothered her own baby. That's Munchausen by proxy. So my baby was died, so I, the mother, will get a whole bunch of attention. I'm important. I created a tragedy so that I could be the center of attention. So I'm, I'm boring. I'm willing to kill my child. To that's get the likes most extreme. But, but uh, a, a black man, you know, tried to rape. You know, just all the different things people make up to get attention, or you know, whatever. Yeah. So, rude. or a white call, girl called me a name out my name when I'm playing volleyball. Yes. Yep. Well, huh. it's like no, nah, just yeah. No one's no one's. Rude interested. Jude micro aggressed me. Thus. <laughs> You should fight. Fo- you for more. Follow me at yeah. Al Prophet IG. Yeah, yeah. So. I tried to talk to Rude Jude about some real shit. He wouldn't stop saying retard and tranny. He's trying yep. to get me canceled. Yeah, by by just by being next to him. Fuck this dude. Yep. Uh, Al, this is fucking. These are fun combos, man. Uh, Al Prophet with a I at the end. Is that like money? You, is with you an I a, at the end, with the I T, which means uh, yeah, I mean yeah. Oh, not E T. Yeah, they profit. Yeah, yeah. Turn a profit. Yes, I think next time we're gonna do, we'll just pick a subject and dig deep into it. Just blam, blam, blam. It's it's it's. Fuck, it was great talking to you, and we can. You got American dope. We're, they can watch all your shit. Yeah, uh, my you just. I mean, hey, I hate to sound pretentious, but just Google me, baby. Al Prophet or American Dope. I got websites. I got social medias. But what I don't have is no videos of me getting my chain snatched. No one saying I bothered their child. No one saying I told on them. And no one uh, and me and and I don't let anybody threaten each other on my platform. And uh, you know. Yeah, your cat. This uh, well, one Al Prophet is like the OG. Of of the city, despite only being twenty nine. <laughs> yeah, you don't look a day over. You don't look a day over thirty, bro. You fucking crushing it. And just, you, just you're one of these cats that hasn't fucking that you still got some scruples, and I, I appreciate that, especially in such uh, entertainment is such an unscrupulous business. Yeah, it is. But I tell you, especially. something's wrong with, like, to come out here to L.A. and to be old. Like, there's a lot of um, devilish amusements here, as we all know. But, like, to really get overly into any of that stuff, something wrong with you in the first place. Because that, that type of, like, the things you do with the money in L.A., like, 
it just attracts more low, more expensive car, lower life people coming knocking. You ain't bullshit. Well, just, that, that's that. It, but uh, yo, that's 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 anywhere. You got to You got to see who's your. If if no one's telling you no, you ain't got no friends. Yeah, but no, but L. A. Exit. There's this whole in other cities. Like there's not this network of a hundred thousand attractive twenty eight year olds or cool twenty eight year old guys who exist to tell select. Oh yeah, I'll bring you to. Oh, it's Tuesday at ten in the morning. Yeah, I'll bring a half ounce of cocaine and my girlfriend for you to fuck. Just give me three thousand dollars. Like that doesn't really exist in other places not amongst attractive people the people that are down to do that type of shit come from all over the world and end up here you ain't never lie you ain't never lie well I could keep talking to you about all these points and I have to shut the fuck up so thank you very much for having me on and I look forward to our next meeting my man I'll pop it y'all let's go you're listening to the All Out Show with you 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 it's time for News from the Chin with John Z. Matthews. I have a list here of what they're calling sex sore points. But that's sort of a clever headline. Sex sore points. I'm talking about sex injuries. Oh. Yes. Common sex injuries. Can you guess the number one? Bending your dick real hard. That's not, thankfully, as common as you'd think. Oh. Uh, that one really I guess it, I say it cause it just when it does happen it does affect um I don't know butt fucking without lube shit something to do without lube or something like that well just think of a common injury a bruise so they're calling it a bruise oh wait that, they're like yeah. that ain't it bro this of course it's an injury <sighs> I got a bruise I got hit in the fucking face the other day and I was like oh great now I have a little black eye a bruise is yeah, an injury but like, a bruise <laughs> is an injury Nah, man, you're a pussy. How, why, how am I telling the boxer he's a pussy? Have you ever heard a fucking boxer roll up on you and be like, check out this injury I have? My little point to a bruise. <laughs> no. Just tell me, have you? I, I would never say that outside of the here. I'm saying, John, it's not a fucking injury. It's a contusion. If you've been bro, been, if you can get something from stubbing your toe, like I'm not calling stubbing a toe an injury, man. I'm talking about ah, you bent your dick in a weird way. And I guess you could argue the same thing, or it's not causing anything permanent. But a bruise, a lot of times, it it doesn't even it's not even painful. Like how many times? As a matter of fact, not to give up too much of information, I just bruised the fuck out of this chick's ear yesterday. Oh no. She didn't know if she got bruised. No one knows she got bruised until the next morning when she was like putting on her makeup. We can't like slap her across the head. Nah, I bit the fuck out of her. I might. I don't know, man. I bit the fuck out of her or some shit like that. Wow. I was just eating her up. You don't sometimes. <sighs> it clearly wasn't painful or she would have stopped or wasn't t- painful for a super long time. And then I injured. I. <clears throat> I hate fucking in my room over here. The, the bed's on, like, the bed's in a weird position. It's, it's hard to fucking, some, some beds are harder to fuck on. This bed, it's in a weird position, and it's got wheels. So the more the more you thrust and shit, it just goes all over the place. If you looked at my thing, it looked like I was fucking for seven hours. Not so, sir. And I kept smashing my head into the, into the wall because I couldn't get the motherfucking leverage. I was trying to go deeper, but the wall kept, ooh, stop. Ooh, stop. Oh. But then if you, like, try to reposition, it's like the whole heat is done. Mm. It's a real. That's so why I got to set, you know, my other rooms, they got a good fucking setup. They're built for fucking. They got the fucking fang shui. All right, tell me these injuries. Got the fuck bruising? Room. Okay, is that what we're doing? Bruising? Well, it, I don't know. It does get progressively fucking worse. Cuts, abrasions. Yeah. Okay. You... I would call butt fucking a chick until she's bloody way worse than fucking. I would call that a like oh, it's a blood. Well, thankfully that's not really common, but it is on the list. An anal tear. Ah, anal well, tear. that's what I mean. Like opening, like when your body opens up, that's kind of more a thing. And we're not talking about STDs. Just tell them to me because I'm, I'm never going to be able to guess. All right. So number two, you won't like carpet uh, burn, of course. Carpet burn. I've had that on the knees. <laughs> All right. uh, UTI, that's number three. 
That's common. That's just like a venereal disease, ain't it? Uh, or wait, U- UTI, uh, yeah. urinary tract infection. Right. Yeah. Uh, then BV, bacterial vaginosis, if we're going to count that. Now, that doesn't count now. Like th- th- That's what I mean. There's no rhyme or reason to this. Well, people are pulling muscles, of course. Vaginal tears, back wow. injury. Yeah. All right. Uh, some sort of allergic reaction. I guess they don't like the semen. That would be like BV or condom shit. A hemorrhoid? How do you get a hemorrhoid during sex? Ass fucking. Butt fucking. Okay. Hemorrhoids. Yep. And then... Way down on the list, the final one here, a twisted ankle. Do you ever think to read the responses before you, like, when you send it to me, it's clickbait. But then when we read it, it's bullshit. I think people are twisting their ankles. I'm just, the whole thing, none none of this, we should, this is an article that should never have been written. This is like common colors in a painting. Or, you know, it's red, yellow, white. Like, these are all, that's just part of sex. You don't have many injuries during sex, I don't think. I just told you, like, but, like, any of that shit happens, it's just par for the course. I thought I was, like, doing some weird shit and. Cost of doing business. Yeah. This is literally, the, this is, this is, like, yeah, dog, cost of doing fucking. Yo, you want some good fucking, right? Everybody wants some good sex. Hey, as a matter of fact, if this isn't on your list, then probably you're not having the best sex. That's how I would write it. Be like, this is which things you should accept, things you should uh, not accept, but like, you know, be things that might happen while you're having sex. Bruises, good sex. Carpet burn, good sex. What's the other one? Throwing your back out. Yep. More good sex. Mm-hmm. Twisting your ankle. You're living good your best life. Sex. I don't, whatever the fuck you did on that one, hey, man, you must have been doing it. Unless it was like a banana peel in the room. Like, other than that, like, if you're twisting your ankle while you're fucking, all right, dog, what the fuck did you do? I just don't like the way they phrase it. It makes it sound like bitches. These are common injuries. All right. All right. Well, this next article brought back a very traumatizing moment from my youth. Okay. Uh, and that was because uh, we were up in Connecticut, friend's house, enjoying the, the country, and then a bird smashes into the window, and it's just fluttering outside on the, on the ground. And I'm like, what, what do we do with this dying bird? And that's because you there was a... with a brick. You know, I, you know, I'm a little kid. It was... It was I know. Though. <laughs> we had to say, my homie did it. That's what I'm just saying. It's mean, but like, you don't know what else to do. What do you do? Like, okay. Sorry, little flying friend but and so they're saying here these bird feeders next to the windows they are sort of just causing casualties all over the place sending our friends to their grave so you need to keep the bird feeder away from the fucking no we need to eliminate windows to save birds oh based on the logic that i'm dealing with in this world no more windows to save birds that is an option Fuck that shit. Do you care about birds or not? The only way to keep birds from dying from windows is to eliminate windows, John. I hear you. Or maybe get the blackout windows. Ah. Uh-huh. Because I don't even know if the mirror shit, mirror shit might freak them out. They might start fighting themselves. Well, you got the... Yeah, running away. You got the house over there. You have any bird feeders floating around? No. Mm-mm. Sorry for the bait. Um, no, dog. Nuh-uh. I just try not to... <sighs> Everyone loves a hummingbird Like, I feeder. go feed the ducks or something. Like, I go to a park where the animals are kind of domesticated as it is and feed the ducks. Or, like, there's some shit over here. We got I got deer in my backyard, bro. Ah. I look out. I can see deer. Lyme just disease. Chilling. Was that? Lyme disease. Look out. Oh, deer. Huh. Yeah, it's, it's, it's some real shit. Um, I know some people got it. That's like, for y'all that don't know, it's a tick that comes and burrows in you, and then you get fucked up. It's like a forever. Yeah, I didn't really think it was that big of a deal when I was a kid, and then I it's read like these nature, stories. Nature's 
Hep C or some shit like that. I don't know. What? I mean, and then I, I read about people who are you know, suffering, you know, with Lyme disease. I'm like, it's that bad? I'm like, oh, yeah. In Michigan, it was huge because we got that whole up north thing. So that, was, that kept making the news in the 90s. Like, another case of Lyme disease. Do not go in the forest. It was that type of deal. <laughs> Pull up your socks. Yes. Check for ticks. <laughs> Fear mongering to sell shit. All right. Yeah, I don't know. I just don't like, I, I always, it just seems to me, every time we try to do some shit to fuck with nature, we never get, we can never, we never understand the consequences. And ultimately we will. We do do it, but I just have faith that the little birds will find their shit. I guess it's cool to have, why don't they just put bird feet on the ground? Right. That's a good idea. Yeah, just throw it on the ground. Hey, here you go, bird. Because I get it. It's, it's nice. Especially like old people. They they got the little bird feeders making their coffee in the morning because they wake up real early and then they look at the birds outside. I remember my, my dad was so old school. He would uh, he had this bird feeder in the back. That he, he just had a gallon of milk, cut out the holes, and just threw yeah. some seed in there and then hung it from a tree. <laughs> That's how you do it. I remember those. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, why are you? I don't know. It's just I mean I haven't seen that since I was like uh, like a super little kid. No, no I forgot about those. Yeah, yeah. you know what? Yeah, we always. <sighs> yeah, you know what it is. You can't say that you give a fuck about the environment and you bought a bird feeder, B- bird feeder. No, goddamn well you could have made one real easy. Mm-hmm. And got rid of the waste. That's what we should do if you really care about the environment. Let's look at all the things that we don't really need to do. Ziploc bags, we can throw those out. Just use your old paper bag or your old plastic bags that everything else comes in. Or those those shit should file like everything we use. You don't need glasses. We got jars. You wanna save some you wanna save the world or not? I thought about you last night. I almost threw a jar. Out of a jar? I, I I kept a jar. I said, wait a minute. <clears throat> that's my new drinking jar. Hell yeah, right? And it's bigger, too. You like, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the best. They, That's what... Hey, man, before we do all this other shit for the world, why don't we just eliminate all the stupid things? I can't replace fossil fuel that easy. But I can get rid of the stupid fucking bird feeders when you could just make them out of shit. Everything we can use... All the waste that we could use to do things... But it's aesthetically not pleasing to the very same people that say they care. Hypocrites. No more dildos. Just use cucumbers with fucking uh, a condom on them. Boom. It's environmentally sound. And it would be encouraging, like, it would be supporting farmers instead of the plastics. Instead of big rubber industry. (laughs) We could got... Yo. All right. Maybe... This is our assignment, everybody. We're going to think about shit that we have that we can replace everything else. Like, if we already got it, just replace it. I can't think of nothing off the top of my head because I'm stupid today. But there's a ton of that, a ton of those things. This coming from the man who seemingly is opposed to recycling. But you are all, you're all about reusing now. Reuse. No, I, I grew up reusing. That's the thing. People think that recycle and reuse are the same. Reusing, I know what the fuck's gonna happen to it. I don't have some fucking green dumpster that I'm putting my shit in, and I'm like, oh, I'm doing it. I'm helping the world. Like, no, idiot. Reusing. Yeah, I I don't get garbage. I don't get garbage bags. I just use my like grocery bags, and put garbage in them. Boom, saving money and the world. Ooh. Love it. All right. All right, that's your assignment. Y'all, we're going to do a fucking thing. See? All Out Show. Saving the world. All Out Show. Saving the fucking world. How about this? Toothbrush, one family. And some... <laughs> just one just one family and you just get a little uh, peroxide. Now now we just saved a bunch of, bunch of plastic. All right, so let's not go that far. Let's not go that far. Ladies, you get, uh, ladies, you, if you get vitamins, y'all like health, right? Right. Save that cotton. Put in your pussy. Whoa. Poof. Tampon. Damn. 
All right, that's a uh, look. So that's that's a bridge too far. By but way, I do want to know what people how, how people freak shit. I have met some hippie ladies who do sort of make their own tampons, and I mean, that was, was quite possible. Kind of grossed out by that. But. They did that back in the day. They would throw some wool up in their shit. Yeah. Eesh. That was one of my favorite jokes. Um, Maybe it wasn't. Tell you, I'll tell you what's that. Maybe it wasn't a tampon. Probably a pad. Ooh. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. But like that's what I mean. We just do so much. We always doing too much. No, you, sh- you shouldn't. I don't understand why people have Tupperware. I still don't to this day. Right. Okay. That type of shit. And the Tupperware people and the bird feeder people and all these people are like yelling at me about fucking shit up. Meanwhile, I'm like, mm, I'm not buying a lot of Tupperware. I'm just reusing this shit over chalk. Sir, I mean, there were Tupperware parties when we were growing up. That was a deal back in the day. <sighs> the craziest shit, a Tupperware party. Man, look, that's hey, no, it's not crazy. It was actually when like women helped out around the house. It's not a Tupperware party. And it's, hey, single mom, it doesn't count that you helping out around the house when there's only one of you. All right, I'm talking about like when there was housewives and they g- gave a fuck about their kids and shit like that, and they're in their fucking home. I've met some middle-aged ladies who have uh, sex toy parties, so they would, uh, you know. Well, that's our new Tupperware party, because the Tupperware party is all about what? This is about ladies getting together, chopping it up, buying something. Probably now you say, look at that. The new party is the sex toy party. You know why? Because you're old and you're single, ladies. <laughs> you're hey. old and you're single, and you still need to hang out with each other and have some community, but now... All you, all you have is a dick, a play dick. So think about how sad you are when you're going to these parties, your little sex toy party. Every, every purchase of a dildo is just saying, "I don't have a man. I'm gonna die alone." But I'm during, dying alone now. This they should call it the die alone party. During that party, lots of squealing, like they're at the strip club. <laughs> the fucking, Ugh. I'm a part of a nonprofit and have a bunch of dogs and cats parties. <laughs> or if you want to go on the other side you already got some kids but no man uh, all my daughters uh, four going on 40 party I'm the mom and the dad party that's the new name for the sex toy parties nice he's mean but he's true um, who else what else so over, over the years, you are fond of pointing out people are eating their feelings, but I do have some reasons why people overeat. Eating your feelings is on there. Can I get eating your feelings, uh, Steve? Steve Harvey. Is it is eating your... Yes! Right. Eating your feelings. But, I'll tell you another one. Okay. And, and this is only because they apply to me, and I haven't thought that much about it. Uh, growing up in the clean your plate household, I don't, I don't see that, but I'll, I'll I'll give it to you. Man, that's a, yo. Have some depression. Have some depression era family members, man. You gonna eat everything? I'm programmed. I've been told to have brothers because they're just fighting for the food. That's another thing. Man. Multi siblings. <laughs> Can I get multi siblings? You're. It is a rush. Yup. <laughs> Do you got any guesses that's not on there? Uh, you know, I, I, I just, for me, I just never eat, so I don't really think about eating very often. I, I eat to live. I understand that, but you do understand other people do other things that you don't do, yes. and you are allowed to guess at things. Well, uh, let's see. Uh, when it comes to overeating, I would say social pressure. There you go, social pressure. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Or um, isn't there like a weird sweet and salty combo that makes you just keep craving and craving and craving? Yeah. I'll say, can I get um, uh, you know, the techno the food technology has gotten better to make us want to eat. Yes, absolutely. Can I get empty calories? Oh, that's Steve. yep. Processed Steve, foods. Empty calories. Processed foods. Yes, and everything's processed. And that's because it looks like because uh, the woman's not in the house anymore. Oh, man. <laughs> So it, I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna say this to y'all. You know what? I'm just gonna all that shit. I keep talking. It's just gonna make ladies not want to be in the house. All right. I was just kidding, ladies. 
It's not your fault. Everything's not your fault. All right, a couple that are listed here. Uh, poor sleep. For some reason, that leads us to eat more. Uh, there's a 300 uh, calorie per day intake difference between good and poor sleepers. So, hey, that's weird. Uh huh. I mean, well, in, tr in truth, sometimes when I'm up pretty late, I'm like, you know, I could, I could use a sandwich. And then I reach out the DoorDash and waste a shit ton of money. No, you you ain't lying, bro. Like, I've noticed that the harder it is for me to sleep, like, I'll just be like, yeah, like, you, you don't realize it, but then you're like, you just pack on another fucking, you add a sandwich a day. That, that adds up, you know? Like, a, oh, now I'm used to this. Yeah, that's, that's a good, that's a good answer. Mm. And also, Family feud. Good answer. They're right, also saying here, uh, I guess we sort of covered this because it's a, like social pressure, but social facilitation is what they put it here. People may eat 48% more at restaurants when eating with friends versus eating alone. That and the rise of going out to eat. Mm. People don't. People, man, we did not. It was not like this back in the day, bro. Going to a restaurant was a big deal when I was a kid. Someone like had to fucking something had to have happened, you know. That it's something had it wasn't even a birthday. It was like something fucking birthdays ain't shit. Everyone has a fucking birthday. It had to be like uh uh you know, a wedding, you going to meet the going to meet the in-laws or whatever for a wedding or something like that. I remember my my grandma, she graduated from college. We went to Big Boy Got the all you can eat salad bar on that shit. That was fucking fire. Those are the two I can remember off the top of my <laughs> off the top of my head of us going out to eat. Well, but now you have transformed. I mean, when was the last time you went out to eat? I'm sure it was like last week or two weeks ago or something. No, I just never cook at the motherfucking crib. So yeah, you're right. Now it's all that. Yeah. It's all that. But I think part of it's just because I'm single. Oh, that's a huge part of it. Can I get being single? I think being single make you eat more sometimes. All right, what else? All right. Does uh, nobody wants to cook alone? For Can I get nobody wants to cook alone and eat that shit by themselves? There yes. All right, what else? So uh, I've got some reasons why cheaters will most likely cheat again. Because you're terrible. You're a terrible human being. I think it's because it's in our nature. Um, I think it's in everybody's nature to cheat. And we have to fight that. Most things that we hate each other for is the very things that make us human. But we have to control these urges or else we're just... We're no better than any other animals. So, like, it's just controlling your urges. But I feel like... I feel like the high testosterone cats cheat. It's just, it's just in them. It's like part of your deal. Well, it's like a tough guy, ball player or some shit, round pussy a lot. You can cheat. There's two main drivers to engage in serial infidelity, and you got the, the sports people and the rappers you were talking about. Access to desirable partners. Mm -hmm. They're out there. Ladies cheat a lot of times to get likes. Women women tend to need, uh, what is it, like, uh, hey, you're doing a good job all the time, like constantly like reaffirming them and shit. So if they're not getting at the crib, they'll go, they'll go outside and go get that shit. Like if, you know, if, they're, if their man was like, hey, I really appreciate you doing a great job was doing everything else right she wouldn't need to talk to her co-worker about shit and have a work husband and then bang him down the road and I also think that uh, the get back women will get back at your ass by fucking somebody that happens more that's so hard to wrap my head around that you really have to be like a vindictive weasel to do that but... John we're going to do a call in with this one too. I hope you're writing it down, right? We got the, what are we going to, the recycling shit, uh, or how to save the world by reusing things. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, I'm, I'm going to, we're going to open up the phone lines and have just women who have had get back sex. 
payback sex and stayed with the dude that cheated, but got back at him. Well, there was that lovely young lady yesterday who was cheated on, and uh, she didn't get back. No, but she stayed with the guy, and they're happily married, supposedly. I know, man. Like that's why I was just like, boy, she sure is a catch. And she sounded so sweet. Yes. I'm like I'd want to hang like, out look, with her. Man, <laughs> like, she hang might out be a doormat <laughs> other places, but like that is, that is. That's why I was blown away. That chick is a fucking. She's a pink platinum unicorn. You don't see that, bro. All right. So, what are the reasons to cheat? What's the other reason? Uh, people tend to behave in accordance with their attitudes. So when they have uh, a more, I, I guess they get conditioned to thinking like, okay, well, I got away with it once. Eh, let me just do it again. Yeah, it's also like your culture too. It's also your culture. So, yeah. And here's here's a weird part of this whole article, talking about why people sort of find themselves in cheating relationships. Uh, these people might continue stumbling on certain relationship styles that create an environment where infidelity is likely. They're sort of it's like, they just kind of expect someone to cheat on them. So I'm like, yeah, he's going to cheat on me no matter what. So you don't really sort of run from this scumbag, hmm. and then you just find yourself repeating this same nightmare over and over again. And you're being cheated I th on. I think there's certain things too, like there's certain uh, behaviors that may lead to cheating. And a lot of times we've got parent issues. So we tend to go after people with those weirdo issues. And then the cheating is just a byproduct of that. Does that does that kind of make sense? Sure. Is that, I just want, sometimes I say shit in weird ways. Yeah, so it was just like, yeah, man, sister, over the years she had bad boyfriends because she'd get she'd be attracted to weird negative aspects that she didn't realize she was att attracted to that my dad had and my dad has issues so from what I've learned over the years with you it sure seems like it <laughs> R.I.P. Big Ass you still the shit I know I love know. that motherfucker I know but I just had to say it because I was smiling after because I was thinking of all his, his wildness yes but yeah, so she'll, it looks like this dude's the furthest thing away from my father, but he be the dude can't keep a job, always blaming other people for his shit, constant victim. Like my dad had that problem. So it's just like, yo, yeah, he might look like some art, artsy fucker, some hipster artsy guy with a nice haircut, but he got that, he got that aspect in him that my sister understood. I do some quick good news for you. Lay it on me. And now, time for good news. There is a uh, mother of 10. She's got 10 kids out of Australia. Hello, governor. So Wait, that's not. Hey, put some dick in my barbie, mate. Man, 10 kids. All right, so her name is Samantha Dixon. And so. Yeah, you know it because she gets. Okay, yeah. Puss Dixon or <laughs> pussy. And then comes. They sure do. Is it the same dad? You know, they don't tell me, but just looking at her and the story. It's got to be. I said, did you send me a picture or some shit? Not really. I mean, it's just like, she looks like a school teacher lady. All right. Samantha yeah. Dixon. All right. Same so kid, same dad. That's impressive. So she has this hidden book shtick going on in Australia, and the kids love it. So she came up with this idea of hiding books in local parks, store windows, uh, after people, after hearing about people doing it here in the U.S. and hmm. elsewhere. The books are placed in plastic bags, and... After kids find them, read them, they write their name inside the cover, and then hide the book again, or pass it along to a friend. It sounds kind of corny, but you know, the kids get off on it, they're reading. Hey, man, we need to do, like, I'm going to, if anyone's doing that hidden book thing, you kind, you reach out to us and we'll send you free copies of my book, Finn. Yeah. Hmm. I think that would be awesome. I think that would be potentially legally problematic. Why? Well... Why is it legally problematic, they John? Got, they got the kids. The kids. Man, they got they they got kids. Didn't you see the gay books that they got out there? That's all I read. Yeah. You can watch a blowjob. You can go to the elementary and get like a blowjob book. You can watch someone get some head. I'll go there after school today. My shit is yeah. lightweight. Like I'm a, I'm like finally I can get into the schools. Nice. Yeah. All right. It's all about acceptance. So like all right. Tolerance. So, yo, yeah, if you are, what are the chances of any of our listeners doing the leave a book thing? 
Well, you know, I've got some books back there. I can put them in a bag, see if anyone uh, picks them up. Put a little note there explaining what this is. See if we can... Uh, Welcome to the free book thing. Yeah. See Let's, if we can have it travel around LA. Yo, yeah, yeah. Anybody doing that, we'll send you... I'll send you 10. Uh, like, we'll, I'll send you 10. I'll just do it for fun. I would love... See how far it gets. How many people sign I it? would love, 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 love. That would make my fucking day. That would be kind of fun. Oh, man, that'd be awesome. All right. But so she's got that. She's got the kids doing it. Yeah, and they're reading, and they're, yeah, they like go out and finding the books. So. Why does the fact that she had 10 kids have to do with any of this? It's just a fun fact about Samantha. Oh, oh okay. Next. All right. Next. Samantha has childbirth and hips. Is she big? Is she small? What does she look like? Looks like she's had 10 kids. Can you send me a picture? Because I'm over here just speculating. Look, man, I know a lot of, I know a lot of ladies that had like, like my grandma, for instance, man, she has six kids. Okay. She was in great shape. Sometimes I feel like when you see a person just having kids and they got like a regular thing going on, they actually look pretty, pretty good. Yeah. She's easy on the body's ends. doing what it's supposed to do. You send it to me. Let me I'm see this on it. fucking sexy girl. You're going to have it in five seconds. Four. Three. Two. And I'm going to try to like squint my eyes and look at, man. Hello, Net News Australia, governor. Wait, that's hidden books. This is a hidden book. Oh, my God. That is. Uh, yeah, she don't look bad at all. Ten I kids. I didn't, I didn't say she did. I Bro, you said it looks like she had I said ten she's kids. easy on the eyes. That's a compliment. Oh, I. Th it's a. It depends on what ten kids look like. Right. She's a little, she's a little thicker. Like she's a little thicker, but she is not. She is skinny in American terms, and had ten kids. Shit, good on you, lady. Yeah, based on the way she's dressed, it looks like she has one husband. I did say she looks like a school teacher. Which yeah, you you went lying, but now I can now I can tell. All right, guess what? That's the fucking news. You're listening to the All Out Show with you. All right, y'all, that was a show. Shout out to Al Prophet. Um, yesterday on What Would You Do, we had one of our listeners call up because he won. Uh, he had a he had another listener he met on the air, and he flew her out, and they had a weird time, and he ended up blocking her on everything. I think it's only right to let let the woman get her side of the story in if you were that listener hit up at all out show if you're that lady if you're the woman that he was talking about hit up all out show and even copy john z matthews that'd be helpful and copy at john z matthews there you go at john z matthews at all out show is it easier to go through you I think so, just because. All right. I mean, I don't know. Who well, just because people. there's so much shit flowing through the All Out Show account, mine okay. is a little more manageable. Alrighty, that makes sense. All right, so you, we got that, okay, y'all. So, and if you didn't hear, you got to go back and listen. Um, the uh, I guess we had the lady on. She was talking about not being able to talk to no dudes. A dude decide a listener decided to call up, call her up. They got numbers. He flew her out. They had a nice weekend thing, but then she didn't want to leave, he said. This is all according to him. He said she didn't want to leave, and she jumped out the car and ended up breaking her breaking her ankle. That was after she purposely missed one flight. Um, so, we want to hear from you, lady. We do. We want to hear from you. So, please, add John Z. Matthews at Kylo King. Shout out to Al Prophet and everybody that called up with the word list, the played out words. We'll do played out words again in a couple weeks. And just like that, we go. <laughs> <laughs>